Greetings, pro wrestling fans, and thank you for joining us at the Pro Wrestling Look Back Podcast. I'm Nick, and I'm sitting here with... It's no big deal, but uh, it's Hollywood Don. Oh my goodness, Hollywood Don is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to have you here, Don. Yes, yes. You want me to do it? And, oh yeah, of course I want you to do it. All right. The Thrill CC on Oh, it never gets old. I love it. And we talked about it before we hit record. I love nicknames. So even though I don't have one, I like to pretend that Nick <coughs> is a nickname. Because it's Nick, but it's a name, right? This, no? Your, the, last, your last name is name. Your name is Nick. Name. This isn't a work here. <laughs> oh, it's not. Go get your t-shirt. Teespring.com slash pro wrestling look back podcast. That's what Donovan's uh, getting at there. Check it out. If you want to give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter as well, it's at PW look back on both of those. Give us a follow, like, share, comment, send us a DM or PM. Maybe I don't know which one I've decided on what I'm saying, but let us know if, uh, you know, questions for the show topics for round tables or even ideas for look back shows or, or, uh, you know, what's the other one, Don? It's a championship look back. Let us know. Series. It's, which, it's uh, coming, coming soon. It's coming theater com- near you. Coming back. Hopefully, hopefully. But yeah, you can send us an email, prowrestlinglookback at gmail.com. And then if you're not already, hit us up on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube. Subscribe, hit the five stars. We appreciate it. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Salsa, S-C-E-L-S-A. At just on 44 and uh, no need to follow. At Lateral G, L-A-T-E-R-E-L-G. And the most important one, like I said before, at PW Lookback. Give it a follow. And if you don't already, check out our sponsor at Pure Oxide Premium CBD Oils. It's at Pure Oxide CBD on Instagram. And you can check out the affiliate ca- accounts as well. There's a few different local regions on there as well. PureOxide.com ships worldwide. No GMOs, no THC. This stuff is lab tested. It's amazing. I've been using it for probably two months now. It works incredible. They have two different bottles. It's a 2,500 milligram bottle and a 5,000 milligram bottle, as well as a 3,000 milligram cream. Uh, check out Justin Brothers on Instagram at Justin.Brothers if you want to get in contact with him and he can help you out find kind of the right product that suits you. Um, and like I said, joint pain, anxiety, overall pain, well-being, and they've got hundreds of positive reviews and feedback. Check them out on Instagram, like I said, at PureOxideCBD and PureOxide.com to uh, get your order. But how's it going, boys? How are you? It's good. This is the first time we've had the three of us in since I think Royal Rumble 1992 look back show. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I don't know for sure, but I don't think the three of us have ever done a round table. That's like over 20 <coughs> years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long time ago. But yeah, uh, that one's I think it's on iTunes for people to check out, but it's been a while since we- we've had the three of us sitting around the round table. Yeah. As much as the table may or may not be round. Um, how's it going? Oh, you know, life's been doing, building a keyboard, like I told you guys before the show. That's yeah. been interesting. Still would, doing the arc racing? Oh, yeah. Still you, doing that. That's going strong. You guys did your, your tryouts there for the, the different tiers of, of, of racing? Yeah. We're, we're doing it a little bit differently this year, so it's not necessarily tiers. Okay. It's kind of like everyone, we we had actually 50 signups, which is a new record for us. So the way we're doing it is this year. Am I good here? Yeah. All right. Here we go. A little bit of technical there, but we fixed it, is that... This one, it, everyone's kind of in the same tier, mm. but we divided the teams up, so it's kind of like so many so many of the drivers are going to be in what team based on what times they get. So anyone can be in that top tier of driver. It's just they have to qualify well enough to be in that top tier race. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Seems pretty good, but do I got to still practice or what? Oh, yeah, you got to practice. <laughs> you you got you got a lot to go. Yeah, I got a lot to go. I've been playing too much Assetto Corsa. I think it's so the physics are so different than Gran Turismo that it's hard to kind of jump back and forth. And then as, on top of that, playing F1 2019, it's oh, kind yeah. of very different, the three games. But, yeah, everybody go check out ARC Racing, Sim Racing stuff on, on YouTube. Will does a really good job of, of the commentary for those races. So any of the... Oh, the thank you. <laughs> any of the racing people that, that check out the show that are interested, go check them out. What about you, Don? How how you doing? Not bad, you know, chilling, killing in the uh, Halloween spirit, you know, getting <laughs> Chip, amped up. There and, you go. Uh, yeah, this is your month. You're, I know you're excited. It's coming. You know, not not too much. What about you? What's going on with you? Ah, uh, well, I went to my little brother's football game last week. Oh, nice. And I've never been to a high school football game. I don't know if any of the American listeners that might sound weird to them, but high school football not quite, you know, as big as it is down in the states up here. But it was cool because my brother lives in, in a few towns over. He's, well, you know, my, my dad remarried, long story, whatever. Mm-hmm. He lives in a few towns over, so he was playing my old high school. 
So he was at my old high school, which is really close to my house. So my dad let me know, and then I went over and watched the game, and it was really cool just to kind of see my old school playing my brother's school yeah. now, who's in high school. Who'd you root for? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I was rooting for my brother, but my school was destroying them. I think it was like Ooh. 40 nothing or something like that, Ooh. So, which is crazy because back when I was in school, we were horrible at football. <laughs> like, we only got a football team for the very first time in our school's history when I was in grade 10 or 11. So, yeah, we obviously they've done well since then, but... Just being at the old, the school was fuck nostalgic, oh, if, yeah. <laughs> if, if I, to say the least. Even little things like they've got a big giant jumbo scoreboard now with visitors and and all this. Like you know what I mean? Like a picture of high school football scoreboard. And I looked at it and I was like, wow. I was like, we didn't have that. We had a guy sitting at a desk with a little flip, flipping the numbers <laughs> over on the white thing. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much it. But. Yeah, so, and then we had to, not that it matters, but we had to go move our cars because they're on the roads and this is one security guy. We're like, oh, why is there security here? And this guy basically told everyone to move their cars. So it's like, you see like 30, oh, pa- 30 parents just walk out to the street, get in their cars and move them. But then I had to put my car in the in the front parking lot. So I had to walk back up to the field and I'm like, oh. I'm like, I'm walking through the school. Fuck this. <laughs> so I go through the school and holy shit was that a trip because I haven't, I graduated high school about 10 years ago and I've yet to go near the school since then Mm -hmm. so it it was quite the trip walking through the the old high school hallways and it's funny because obviously you have four different if you're in high school for four years usually you get four different lockers i couldn't tell you where any of them are except for my first one and it was grade nine and i walked right by it and i looked at it and i was like that's fucking crazy (laughs) that was like whatever fifth you know 14 years ago or whatever it was grade nine so i don't know that was quite different and just nostalgic and i figured it was something to bring up to you guys it doesn't really happen you know every week to you, me or you ever do that don you ever walk by <coughs> through your old schools no but i was gonna say like i've i've thought about this and not so much with um my high school because i started in one high school ended up going to another and my mm-hmm. high school days were very very interesting to say the least okay so i have like better memories of actually public school and a lot of good times at public school i'd like to like go and speak to the to the kids to one the time, youth you know what I mean? yeah i i don't <laughs> know what i have to offer oh this is great you should really like, prepare some kind of yeah. motiv- booklet motivational or, speaker done i would love to you know you, know, you never know yeah. bro this could turn into something you could be <laughs> traveling from school <laughs> to school <laughs> educating the young youth of... you used to be the kid that watched the assembly now you're the guy on the stage for the assembly <laughs> hey man it's possible I got a lot of memories from from the public. I do too. The public school days, and I'm lucky enough that my public school and my high school are both, I mean, walking distance from my house. Yeah. So I haven't. That would be really cool to go back to the elementary school and walk around those halls, and not only because you feel huge. You ever been inside an elementary school? That's what it is too. Everything is little in there. Like even (laughs) the water fountains are down by your fucking knees. Like it's it's you kind of forget how the school is built for kids like well, obviously but you know what i mean like the the architecture of the building and it doesn't feel like that way when you're walk when you first going through it hell no you're that height yeah you're that big the coat racks are their perfect size for you the water fountain makes sense yep. but you know as you get older you realize i mean you'd realize it when you're in grade eight or whatever and you go down to the you know little area and there's the water fountains down there but but yeah i don't know i love nostalgia and going to my old school was Something that was I wasn't expecting to do, that's for sure, because I yeah. totally forgot about the game. My dad had texted me. I was like, yeah, I'm going to come by for sure. But um, I wanted, not that I want to get into this very often on the show, but boys, I love this fucking time of year. Mm-hmm. I really do. This, like, it's not too cold and it's not too hot outside. It's fucking just perfect. It's the Goldilocks weather of weather. And again, I don't want to talk about weather very much on the show, <laughs> but I just had to say, like, this time of year right now that we're having is, like, the golden for me as far as it's not too hot and it's not too cold i have to say i like the temperature i hate the gnats oh the bugs oh yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that might be more of a regional thing for us here but anybody who deals with that probably knows the same i the only thing i don't like is when you get out in the morning and it's like oh okay it's gonna be a little bit chilly today you throw a jacket on and then by the time 11 30 noon hits it's fucking 30 degrees again (laughs) and it's like where the hell do we live like what is going (laughs) on it's like three or five o'clock and it's like 15 degrees again yeah um pretty wild but um i guess i should let some of the people know what we're getting into tonight probably going to talk a little bit about bray wyatt and i know will's got probably lots to say as well as don you guys are big fans um you're not no i we'll see um i want to talk about smackdown on fox next week and maybe hype up a little bit of the stuff that's going to happen there well i mean there will be another round table before the next episode of smackdown drops but either way it's going to be dropping the the, the same day that the episode comes out so i don't know how much we're going to be able to hype it that night 
Um, I got a few questions for you guys about the 24-7 title, just generic stuff, and then maybe we'll do a little bit of a preview, Hell in a Cell, some of the stuff, because I know you guys won't be here next week, so we'll try and get some of that in. Uh, and then maybe a little bit of Lacey Evans stuff, because well, maybe we'll start with that. Did you guys hear about the, the Lacey Evans, everything that happened with her this week? I heard about it, but I'm pretty sure it's a work. No, totally. No, 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 okay. completely. But I, that's what I want to get into, because I've had now two people, separate people that don't even know each other, mm-hmm. come up to me knowing that I'm a pro wrestling fan and be like, oh, did you guys, or did you hear about the, the girl, the, the wrestler there in, doing her thing in Canada? And I'm like, the first time it was shout out to Matt. He was here with us on Monday and he was asking me about it. And I'm like, no, I didn't see it. I'm wow. And then he pulled up the video and we watched the whole video. I'm sure anybody listening may, may or may not have seen it, but she was calling the police officer a nasty and talking about her ticket and all this stuff. And I kind of looked at Matt and I'm like, I don't want to be that guy, Matt, but that's planned. Like she definitely, I think, worked. She, I think she got a ticket for sure. I think the ticket was real, but I think she got her ticket and then she did her normal pay for her ticket, whatever, get your ticket. But then she said to the guy, okay, I need, or I don't need, I want to see if you can walk back up to my car, pretend like you haven't given me the ticket and I'm going to talk back to you like my character. And that part was probably worked out between her and the police officer afterwards. And then, yeah, I just can't get over the fact that again, two people, and I'm sure there's a hell of a lot more out there that clicked this or saw this or, you know, watch the video on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter or wherever. And we're sitting there thinking, holy shit, this is real. Who is this chick talking back to the police officers and calling them nasties and shit? <laughs> it's all I have to say is, is well, it's I don't even have anything to say. I'm going to do it right here, right now. Good on you, Lacey Evans. Because it worked. She worked everybody. Maybe not us, the people who, you know, have their fingers on the pulse of wrestling. But there's a fuck ton of wrestling, non-wrestling fans out there who thought that was real. So I don't know if I just am hearing other things through the wire about this or whatnot, but I've heard like, uh, yeah, people were talking about it and it was a big kind of thing online. And, uh, but then they, they, she apologized because people were, people were offended or some shit. She did. So <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't get into that. There was Matt cause Matt, when we were talking about it together and I told him, I'm like, I really don't think that's l- legitimate or real. And my only reasoning for not, not thinking it was real was the fact that she kept saying nasty. And I was like, this is her character. This isn't, I don't know who Lacey Evans is in real life, mm. but whatever this is, this is the character that's on Monday Night Raw every week. Yeah. So that's what made me say to Matt, like, this isn't real. She's acting too much like her character. But yeah, sorry, Well, she did post like a disclaimer white picture. I hate that. Kind of, well, honestly, and I said this to the guys on Monday, I don't think any other person would have, like if it was Becky Lynch in the exact same scenario doing the exact same thing, I don't think Becky would have posted that, but with Lacey's ties to being a Marine and being so part of, you know, law enforcement in a way, I don't think she wanted to have any negative connotation coming from this. You know what I mean? She wanted to make sure people knew that this wasn't legit. See, I don't know. Again, like I'm just going off of something I heard. No, but it is true. She did did post I'm saying like I heard that this was all worked out. Like this WWE, this was a whole thing that was worked out. The guy's like related to Natalia or something. Oh, you see, that's that's above my head. I have no idea. That's So this is what I heard. And then I heard now, you know, that the reason she apologized probably through WWE making her do so or whatever, plus her background as well. Yeah. Because they've done this in the past, like something happened with the whole Jack Swagger uh, storyline with the whole we the people and yeah. the Mexicans and crossing the border and they had to come out and apologize and this and that. So it's like, <clears throat> I just don't like when they kind of dance around the line. Like if you're going to do it, go through with it and just fucking do it. Fair I enough. I don't like people, I don't like them going back on it. It's like if, if Bray Wyatt's the fiend and some kid fucking is crying when he sees him in the front row and he's freaking out and then... Bray comes to him after and says, hey, it's all good, buddy. It's me. Like, just, I know what you're saying. Like, I just, I it's <clears throat> not the same comparison because like they're trying to scare kids with the Bray Wyatt thing. Like I, I just, and again, I think it's because she's so in tied in with the military that she felt she had to do that. I don't, again, I don't know how much WWE was yeah. involved. That does make sense. Everything you said. So it could be, it's just above my head as far as if she's related or he's related to Natalia or if mm. this was all, I thought this was something she came up with. Because it seemed small enough. I just think it's stupid when they do these things and then they go back. But, but, but that's but me being knew. a hardcore like, maybe that's what, fan. Well, that's what I was going to gonna say. It's because the two people that, that brought it up to me, mm. they didn't fucking know that. They didn't see that disclaimer. Yeah. Me and Matt, I had to watch the video, talk to Matt, and he had to scroll. Mm. And, and then he's like, oh, wait. 
He's like, I'm seeing like a, exactly what you said, like a little disclaimer. Apology exactly. So all I'm saying is the only people that saw that were the people who really dove in and w- wanted to find out more information about whatever had happened. I would have, I would imagine the majority of people were like these two people that I ran into that kind of thought, oh, what the fuck was that? Because the guy asked me at work because he knows I do wrestling podcasts and I watch wrestling. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, did you hear about the girl in Alberta? And I'm like, yeah, it's funny you bring that up, but, actually. Like, but this is my point is that, see, look, there's people who don't really fuck with it, talking about it. That's kind of cool yeah. for us. So then for them to go and just be like, oh, no, we're just acting, guys. We're just playing around. It's all good. Don't worry. It's all good. I don't like that part of it because I like it when if we're going to work, motherfuckers, then blur work, the, motherfuckers. Blur, blur do the it. line. Go, all, go balls to the wall with that shit because that... Look, people were talking, and then to go back and just be, no, don't worry, we're just playing around. It's just a care, like it's I all hear good, you. guys. I hear you. Like, it takes you out of the moment. It on. completely, and if you are bought in, like we've talked about a gazillion times on this show, then you're probably not as bought in as you were before. And yeah. these guys definitely weren't. After yeah. I told them that it probably wasn't real. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What What do you? What's your take? Yeah. On what? This? Yeah. I was just gonna say earlier when we weren't sure if it was real or not. I'm pretty sure the officer. I'm pretty sure in the video called her Lacey, and Lacey I don't think is her real name. Mm. So I mean, if she was getting an actual ticket, I don't think the officer would have called her by her ring name. Mm. No, for sure. That's and I don't know if, like I said, there was a ticket that was actually dealt out to her prior to that, and then she talked him into doing some sort of skit. Mm. So I don't know. It's a, it's a good point because, yeah, I didn't pick up on the fact that the officer was calling her Lacey, but I just noticed that she kept calling him a nasty. Mm. And I was like, that's her character. This is the same chick that's backstage. She's probably wearing the fucking trippy little hat and doing the same thing she does on Raw and SmackDown. So I don't know. That was kind of my uh, thoughts. And I don't know. I like that Don's firm on yeah. his. No, because it makes sense. Yeah. You're right. It takes you completely out of the moment. And, and, if you're trying to get people that don't watch wrestling into the product or into wrestling in general, then why are we going to tell them right off the bat? No, this isn't real. Let's hook them in and hope that. Well, but I, I feel like most people now know about wrestling in a way that they know it's not real. But see, that's the, my whole point is that to, in my opinion, to make things good and advance a little bit when we can blur the lines like that. It's, it's a it's great, better. it's a great thing if we don't talk about it. Like for example, when, you know, Becky got the the whole bloody nose and everything. Yep. It's like if they if they came, if if Nia came out and you know was like she she didn't really apologize about it, right? Even though it was a yeah. you know accident, mm-hmm. quote unquote, right? It's like if she came out and was like, oh, you know, it was an accident. We're just this is a thing. Sometimes things happen. Like I don't want to see that. I'd rather just just go through with the shit. But I think if you're gonna work people over, you have to work people over to the point that even go back to when CM Punk was. What is, is he or is he not leaving the company with yep. the WWE Championship? Mm-hmm. It was a work to the point that even wrestling fans didn't know what was happening. Yeah, like they, they worked everyone in this situation. It's like they're working just the public people, but everyone who's into wrestling kind of knows that it's uh, not real. So it's if they're gonna blow the line, they have to go all the way. They kind of did it this halfway point, and mm. it kind of muddied the water a little bit. Mm. Yeah. No, I. I'd be very curious to know if WWE told her to put out the disclaimer or with the apology or if that was her. Because that's, that's the kind of the crux of all this is it's like, was she told to do this or was this her? Because that's what you're getting at too, right? Yeah. Does it matter? Or does it, no, it doesn't. Because either way, I don't like it. You know what I mean? Fair like, enough. I think it's the same shit with the, the swagger thing when that happened and they went back on it. It's like, no, that's who you are in this role. We don't need you to come. Like, I don't know. I just, I hate that shit, man. That, a part of that just kills it for me personally. You know what I mean? I, I like that. Yeah. No, speaking on the topic of things that we're not maybe a fan of, let's, let's stay in that vein. How about the new announcers that we've announced now for Monday Night Raw, NXT, and SmackDown Live? No, it's just SmackDown. It's not SmackDown Live anymore. And yes, I specifically didn't tell you this, Donovan, because (laughs) this is stuff that I wanted to talk to you about on the show, knowing that you kind of hadn't seen the show before. Um, We're going to have Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Renee Young on SmackDown. Okay. Which I already don't like. I'm trying to get the right names here because I don't want to tell you the wrong names. It tells you something, right? Um, For... And then for NXT, we've got the normal crew, Beth Phoenix, Nigel McGuinness, and, and uh, Mara oh, Ranallo. Yeah. And Monday Night Raw, we've got Vic Joseph, 
We've got what is this? What, what's Vic Joseph done? He's two hundred five, right? He's the two hundred five live. He's the Michael Cole of two hundred five live, more, okay. more or yeah, less. Yeah. Which he does a great job on two hundred five live. I'll give him credit there. We've got Jerry the King Lawler. Oh shit, Jerry! Yeah. Jerry's back. <laughs> and we got Dio Madden. Who's that? No idea. He's the guy who does two hundred five live commentary as well with Vic Joseph. So. All I can say is fuck this. Interesting. So does this now confirm 205 Live is dead? No, this now confirms that fucking Monday Night Raw is dead. Yo, in my opinion. Where's Byron and Tell and, me. And where, Buddy, well, what's his to name? To be fair, the guy no, one, like, no one really liked name? Byron that much. Uh, I but love Tyler, Byron. I got no gripes with uh, Byron. How about we get fucking Corey Graves <laughs> off the fucking announce team since he sucks, who's, first of all. Who's the other guy? He's by far the worst announcer they have, in my opinion. This really? Guy, he does nothing. See, that, that's weird, because when they first brought him up to the main roster to do commentary, everyone loved Corey. Well, if he actually called anything that happened in the ring, I might be interested in him, but he might as well just be in the fucking crowd talking to his buddy. Yeah, now to he doesn't out. do anything when they're like, there's people are trying to have a match and you have Byron Saxon and, 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 and what is his name? The guy you like, I, oh my, my God, holy shit. my mind too. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was just going to say that how much of that is actually him on commentary or Vince or one of the guys in production telling him what to say? I think it's him. It's 100% him, in my opinion, because the stuff that comes out of his mouth isn't that Vince trippy shit. It's him reacting to stuff that isn't that we're not watching. Like, I was watching an amazing match with, it was Ali versus, uh, who did Ali fight this week? Uh, I can't even remember, but Ali had a really good match this mm-hmm. week, and he was doing all his sorts of flippy shit, and Byron was reacting and acting, you know, holy shit, this is... And Corey's trying to tell some story about some bullshit, and it's like, go fucking take Carmella and get the fuck out of here. In my opinion, like I'm sorry, I just I don't I don't care. I don't know. I've never I like his style of commentary. The only thing I dislike about his style of commentary is when he he's like flimsy. But I like, feel like everybody is these days. Like like one time he will maybe root for a heel, and then the next time he'll kind of root for a face. And he roots just, for the, he'll just favorite who he kind of likes, right? Totally, he has like favorites. Like, he doesn't really pick and choose. I it is bugging me so much that I can't remember the name. Of the SmackDown announcer, know, and we do a wrestling podcast, Same. and I can't remember his name, but I don't know. I'd like to have him where, back. Where are those guys? Though? Todd, Todd Phillips. Todd Jesus Phillips. Christ. There, there it is. So he should be on one of these shows, in my opinion, and Byron should also be on one of these shows. Why do all of them have? They've had so many different commentary teams in like the past two years. Well, I know. I wouldn't say last two years. It's been pretty solid for... Ever, especially like, ever since I Renee remember, has been back. I remember when Moro was on SmackDown. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. he yeah. was on SmackDown for quite a while, actually, but then he went through his whole kind of mental stuff yeah. that he was dealing with, and he had he was gone for a bit, and he wasn't on NXT either, and then he came back to NXT because mm-hmm. he went NXT, SmackDown, and then he left, and then he went back to NXT. Yeah. Um, I we had he, Coach for a bit on Raw. That earlier, I enjoyed. Right? I didn't mind the Coach for a little bit, but uh, my biggest thing with all this, it's not even, and I know I, it sounds like I'm just mad because of Corey Graves <laughs> is still on the show. It's not that. It's it's what I put in our our PW look back Instagram group. This basically just now tells me that Raw is the C show. This is the show that we care the least about, and because we're putting our top fucking team right there, Renee Young, Michael Cole, and Corey Graves, they're on SmackDown. They're on Fox Friday mm. night. This is our new number one show, which upsets me because I love Raw. I like watching wrestling on Mondays way more than Friday nights. To be completely honest with you, mm-hmm. well, to I mean. I don't know if it's to counter your point or not, but they had Brock Lesnar come out and challenge Kofi for the WWE Championship, which was on SmackDown. Oh, yeah. So is this your tipping point now? Is it the commentary team, or was it last week when Brock came out to challenge Kofi? Well, I mean, realistically, the tipping point, the point of the bucket tipping over is the commentary, but the bucket has been slowly leaning for months and months and months ever since this Fox deal was announced in the first place. I've thought that, I've said, I've said it on this show that, you know, we all kind of think SmackDown's going to become the A show once it gets over to Fox. The amount of money that Fox is paying WWE to have that shit on their network, they're expecting a lot. So, no, it wasn't, like, it was the catalyst, but it, it, I've also been thinking this for a long time. It wasn't, and it wasn't Brock Lesnar. I, we talked about Brock Lesnar being on that first show. They're treating this SmackDown next weekend. Again, we talked about before we hit record. They're treating this SmackDown like a pay per view. Mm. So him being there to me is just, it's no big. It's not that it's no big deal. It's just it's very expected. Yeah. I was expecting to see Brock Lesnar. So if you had if you had to rank the teams, the commentary teams one through three, who's your number one? The like these three teams? Yes, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Who is your number one, number two, and number three? With these teams that were announced today? Yes. 
Oh, the SmackDown team. By far, I love Michael Cole. First of all, like he's be- definitely my favorite announcer in WWE. Like it is, it's SmackDown because the reason I'm upset is because they're taking their best people, in my yeah. opinion, and putting them on the new A show, SmackDown. Just like Roman's going to be on SmackDown in the draft, and all those Becky Lynch is probably going to be on SmackDown in the draft, and the top Braun Strowman, I bet you gets to go over to SmackDown, and they'll ship Shinsuke but over to Raw, which is great for me. But I, I don't know. I just, I don't, I, my look at this is that they don't care about Raw as much well, as they did last week. I don't, they can't pack everyone on SmackDown. No. Like, they still got to. No, Seth will <clears throat> stay on Raw, and there'll be some guys on Raw. I bet maybe The Fiend stays on Raw, too. Who knows? But those big people that the executives know, the executives at Fox know who Roman Reigns is. They don't know everybody. I, give me a name that's. You know Apollo Crews. Exactly. Like he, they don't know. They know who Roman Reigns is. This mm. guy's in yeah, that boardroom yeah. that I'm saying. All right, well, we want Roman on our show, mm. and we talked about that last week. Will I'm curious what you think, Don? Do you, do you, do you think? Because I guess we can move past the the announcer stuff. Do you think Fox and USA are basically having a draft? <laughs> I don't mean literally having yeah, a yeah. draft, but do you think they're basically sitting in a boardroom? And deciding, okay, you guys get this, and then we get him, and then you get her, and we get her, and then you're gonna have them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I. Because I don't know. It, it's I'd definitely a decision. Curious to know, yeah, what both parties uh, C- right? want. Right. Because you're thinking that they both care at least. Because if one were to say, "Ah, oh, we don't care, give us whoever," well, then they're just gonna put all the best people on the show of the guys who care. But at the same time, like I'm not really looking at this as necessarily a bad thing. The way they've kind of structured it. I know I don't know those. Yeah. Like, other than Lawler and who knows, maybe it's it's just. But I mean, like I've I remember sorry. in the early talkings of it, like they were gonna treat SmackDown more like a sports kind of shows, which might be cool. And then yeah. I feel like maybe if we do get like the Fiend and and Seth and like more kooky stuff, stuff kind of on wrong, not even kooky, just more like I don't know, maybe the Fiend will kind of be able to continue to do his his thing without or, being so well, like, he, he confined, story right? Story stuff. To yeah, Ron. yeah. That's what I was. That when I said kooky, I meant more like. Uh, not traditional wrestling, not not as sporty. Because mm. there's rumors that SmackDown, and I know it's not right now, but it could end up on, on FS1, Fox Sports 1. Mm. So it's legit like the sports network that all the hockey well, and all I, the I other I think shit. that's one of the reasons they put Renee on SmackDown is because she's got this thing on FS1 with Booker T. Oh, she's got mm. some kind of show coming out? I, I, saw, I heard something about that. Like she has something about for FS1. That's so. still that's really cool because that as in, and I've always said this and everyone knows this sh- her she's the best in that kind of setting that talking smack yeah sitting behind a desk having a panel that's where she really thrives as good as she is I think she's decent she's come a long way in a couple months or a few months I don't know how long it's been now but I you know what I mean I'm I still, think it's been a long time is she was she at Mania yeah yeah, yeah. holy she's shit she's been around a while yeah it's been she's been a while yes yeah. eight months probably then anyway I'm still so curious as to where like Byron and those guys are. <laughs> going to be in this whole thing well yeah like did they just not like are they 205 no there's no i feel like 205 now is going to be aiden english and um well, i guess vic joseph got taken too so yeah i don't well, know nigel where's nigel he's on he's on nxt, NXT only solely nxt yeah he's yeah. same with morrow and Beth. Oh, i guess nxt UK. oh yeah they got a t- yeah yeah true oh yeah well, he's on uk as well i think so yeah nigel yeah okay i just didn't know he must rec- he must do the commentary like not live no, you know he's, there, like, he's there live. Really? Yeah. The guy goes back and forth every week from the UK? There's no way. You're a multi-billion dollar company. I guess you could... No, it's the not the money, you, bro. But, it's but the traveling the UK... on a plane to the UK every week that I'm talking about. No, but aren't they pre-recorded? They, they I, might be. I think they're pre-recorded. They like so like so NXT? Like, like NXT, yeah. yeah. Like NXT was, I guess? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. He goes over to the UK, records Does four it? episodes, and then bounces back. I think so, yeah. That makes sense. The, but, other, the other guy that did the NXT shows was the former 205 guy who was, I guess, now on Raw. Percy Jackson, what happened to him? Because he was on NXT for a while too. Not, yeah, he was, but not him. No, the other guy, the guy that did two of five live. That's on Raw now. Yeah, that they just did, did NXT UK with Nigel. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, and that's the guy that I had just looked up that we were talking about here. Mm-hmm. What's his name again? This I'm not sure. Crazy. It's it, like, it, too his Instagram too. is great black otaku. I don't know what that otaku. means. Otaku. Otaku. I don't know what is that his wrestling name? Who, who? That's that's the commentator, the new commentator on Raw, who had been commentating with Vic Joseph on 205 Live. Well, I think it was Vic Joseph that was on NXT UK with Nigel. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Maybe Byron's uh, getting back in the ring. <laughs> Did he like have to stop? 
I'm not sure for a Excellent. specific reason of some kind, probably. He was bad. I said it. Uh, oh, I think he's I good. I he's really better than Corey, him. in my opinion. Like, significantly he, better than Corey. I think he was talking about wrestling. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see much In-ring of In-ring performance. Probably better than Corey, too. I mean, realistically, I don't know. Corey's a tag team champion, I think, <laughs> at, at one point, right? With my boy. Who? Neville. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. You, I could, you could have given me 20 guesses. <laughs> And that's I wouldn't. such a weird tag team if I you think about it. <laughs> I would not have guessed that at all. But I guess that was when they were still introducing Neville. I wasn't big on Corey as a wrestler. Like, I remember that small period of time. I, yeah, I, I never saw it. I was just, I don't know, just didn't, it looked weird to me. I he's think, good as a comment. I like, like, he suits that. I think he was a commentator when I started watching NXT. Like, he was already yeah. on NXT. I'm trying to remember who else was down there when I first started watching. I'd have to go back and watch some of I those think sh- Tom Phillips was at one point no yeah you're definitely right about that before he was on Smack. that was when Morrow was on Smackdown yeah he was on he was on NXT and I'm then s- I get I think they swapped Todd Phillips went up to Smackdown and Morrow went I for a point there was Todd Phillips was doing Smackdown at one point oh yeah oh he was doing Smackdown this week okay <laughs> like he's done Smackdown yeah, every week yeah. until this announcement today that's what's weird. Todd about Phillips it. is is the Todd Michael. Todd Phillips is pretty good. He's, that's, he's yeah, good. I like him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's very generic and he has <laughs> kind of one tone. But he, uh, to me, they seemed like they were training him to be the next Michael Cole. That's, but it, yeah. it seems like it's Vic Joseph at this point. Like, <laughs> I'm not really sure. Or Renee. Maybe Renee. Um, <laughs> speaking of the women, how do we feel about Carmella winning the 24 seven championship this week? Yeah, I I seen a little uh, blurb on that. Actually, what do you guys think? Should should I, women be winning the twenty four seven? I know we've had, we've already had yeah. women, but I, I'm <laughs> just talking in general, not necessarily what happened. At this the point week. of the twenty four seven title is that anyone could win it at any time. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, I you got to be know. eighty years old in a wheelchair, fall out, roll up a guy up, and you're twenty four seven champion. Good yeah. job. I hope they do some crazy shit. Wasn't there a title down in in AAA or MLW where like a cat won it or something? Oh, that was the I think it was what was it DDT Pro? Yeah, DDT. I, yeah, DDT was the Iron Heavy Metalweight Championship. And it was like a cat fell asleep on this guy or like <laughs> laid like, on this guy's chest while he was sleeping. They, they, and then, at one point, they had a ladder as champion. There you go. Like some oh, dude climbed the ladder and fell on top of him, and the ref counted the ladder as champion. <laughs> so pretty wild, but no, I I'm I'm curious because we don't talk about it much on this show. What are your guys' opinions in general? Anything you want to say by by any means of the 24 seven championship and everything that kind of has happened with it since its inception? Um. With, well, first on the Carmella note thing. Sure, yeah, yeah. Not to say that like I would have wanted it to go longer. I'm a little not surprised it didn't. I'm kind of surprised it didn't happen a bit sooner because there were certain times where they were running around together, and I'm thinking like, I wonder when she's gonna try and yeah go for that. But it, now it was kind of obvious this week when she's like, yeah, like you know, I, I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it. I turned to Newell. I'm like, she's gonna she's, she's gonna pin him. I'm like, <laughs> she's definitely gonna pin him, and she did, and it was good. And then then our truth kind of gave her the hug, but then <laughs> they cut to like the corner, and it's like. Uh, Zack Ryder and uh, what's it? It's Kurt Hawkins. I almost said Mojo. Um, <laughs> and were they a tag team, Ryder and Mojo? I think yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. were in NXT. The hype, bros. The hype, hype bros. bros. Yes, yeah. the smoke coming down. That, they had a dope entrance. Oh, um, but they they look they. Sh- I don't know why they cut to them and they're just like, now what? Now what? And they're looking around at each other like, what do we do now? <laughs> it's just like, and then the women just start running out and chasing Carmelo. They're like, I, we I guess we can't hit Carmella, right? Like, I don't know. How are they going to... Oh, someone can, I'm sure. Just got to find the right dude. <laughs> oh, Corey, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. They posted that fucking picture this week. She posted a picture of her with the belt around her waist, and he's looking down at the belt, and it just says, eyes up here, honey. It's like, <laughs> fuck. You think he's getting it? He's. I he... hope. Well, may... He actually could, which is, is he... crazy. And Maybe after all the chirping that I've done this week, somebody's going to hear it, and they are going to give him the belt. I don't know. But I... Yeah, the, the title as a whole, though, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's like, what I mean. I'm, I'm very, curious. We don't talk about it much. So. I'm, I'm just indifferent. I just, it's there. Like, you know. would you rather it not be there, or do you like that little once a week? You no, have that I guess segment. It's good for um, guys like uh, Truth and Maverick who have like gotten some cool moments out of it. I'm sure Ma- Maverick's made some money off some yeah. t- t-shirts. I'm sure some people so, bought something. I think that's always good when you can get guys, you know, who aren't really doing much to get some shine. So that's cool for mm-hmm. those guys but um i I'll, i'd like to see it evolve a little bit maybe coming in the into the next year evolve a little more as far as like maybe get some decent reigns and actual matchups actual going matches on like kind of like we had with the hardcore title yeah. at times 
Not like full I, blown matches. Yeah, not saying I need a fucking street fight, all out war every week. But I'd like to see like I don't know a guy like a. I thought Elias was going to be that guy for a bit. A guy like an Elias or a Braun who has it and kind of has a little bit of a run and actually maybe defends it from time to time yeah. in, a, in a matchup. That whether would be, that be a regular match or a hardcore match. I'd like to see them do because you know how they always kind of suspend the title. Yes. When it's in the middle of a match. Yeah. I'd almost like to see somebody like have a match with somebody and then have somebody kind of like try and run in and then like still beat them and then continue their match. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe somebody runs at them and they just like roll them up quick, pin them, and then continue on with their match that they're already having. Yeah. yeah. That would be yeah. different. Um, what about you, Will? That, that, that basically turned into an iron or a lumberjack match where he has to pin each of the lumberjacks. <laughs> yeah. That would actually be. They could run in and he. You, if you had a good champion, like a dominant type guy, maybe not an R Truth, obviously, mm-hmm. but somebody who could afford to pin all these guys. That would work. That would be cool. Yeah. Like if Braun won it for a week or something. Kind of like. like how Stone Cold would run into the ring, stunner everyone. It just he runs into the ring, starts pinning everyone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, but do you like it? Do you do you like? I like it. It, it. It's added some entertainment to the show that it definitely needed, and it has given some highlight to some of the uh, performers that haven't been on the show as much. Yeah. Yeah. And there's still a lot of guys they have on their roster that haven't quite been getting that uh, TV time as late. So. There's a lot of people that could step up to the plate for that 24-7 championship. Yeah. Like Mojo, Raleigh, Apollo Crews, et cetera. So it, uh, having it on that show I think is good. But, uh, I mean, there's always a way to see where we can, uh, it can go. But. For sure. For sure, yeah. Uh, I, I like what they've done with it kind of since the beginning and exactly kind of like what Will said. I like that it kind of gives Raw a little bit of a different feel and Raw's a long show, so it's nice to have totally different segments you've got something like the fiend and then something yeah. like this and yeah. it's nice to have the contrast between the two as well as you know long matches with seth and and you know other people I'm, as well I'm, I'm just waiting for our truth to walk into the firefly funhouse while bray wyatt's doing a thing <laughs> <laughs> that would imagine he knock he gets a knock at the door and it's truth <laughs> and he opens the door and truth is there and i don't know that's you're, cr- la- you're laughing at it <laughs> yeah you know it See? would be it yeah. would be I would, I would definitely would pop if yeah. I seen that. <laughs> I was gonna say of all the things with the twenty four seven title, it definitely has created some moments that even I'm like, yeah, that was good. That was worth funny, doing, yeah. 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 Um, what about next week? We've got the Raw season premiere of oh. Monday Night Raw after our massive hiatus that we take in between seasons. <laughs> what like, the fuck is this? Since when's they ever like? I know they've said they've had seasons of Raw, but like, since when are you ever going to go to an HMV or whatever and pick, pick up? <laughs> Season 34 of Raw. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's one thing. And then since when have they... We and Dawn talked about this before you even got here tonight, Will. Since when have they made a big deal about this? Yeah. I don't recall ever hearing them hype this up the way... I just feel like the only reason that this is happening, and it makes sense to me, maybe this isn't, but this, to me this is the only reason, is because of SmackDown. We've got our first episode of SmackDown on Fox... We have when is the draft? It's the it's the following Monday, so I think or I don't know. It's it's coming up. I think it's the the, the October eleventh and fourteenth. Um, so maybe they want to restart everything. Yeah, sorry when you say that. So yeah, SmackDown will get first, then like the first night of the of the draft. draft yeah, we yeah. talked about that. Me and Will last week on the show. Do you think that's weird or what? The fact that SmackDown <clears throat> like the draft starts on Friday and ends on Monday, rather than starting on Monday and ending on Friday. Yeah, it's kind of it is a. It's the a little a- strange it's because the a show, right? is shit going to happen on the weekend as well, like under cover, and then we're going to get more shit on Raw. Oh, this happened over the weekend. Actually, thing got traded back, or maybe because it is going to kind of be obvious if yeah. everybody gets everybody that we see get drafted to SmackDown on Friday. We kind of assume the rest of them are going to Raw, aside from the ones that may or may not pop up on SmackDown or on NXT. Yeah, because I I have to say. I know I get it's supposed to be like a draft and everything, but I have to Im- admit I kind of miss the old days of early two thousands when it was like a lottery, yeah. where they would pull out like the ball of who they got for their first pick or whatever. I wish it was that. That to me is way better. And they made a big deal about it, like the like well, like the Royal Rumble what they used to do, but they don't do that anymore backstage mm-hmm. at the Rumble either, with the with the balls yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, it's they make it seem like it's a a real draft and it just doesn't fit. Because it's not necessary. It's not like a sport. Like it is, but it's t- to me. It's. I agree with Will. I don't really like how they. Oh, we're are with our first pick in the draft. We select. No, no, no. I I kind of like when it's more like random. You just kind of yeah. find out. But it's not even that. Like it's gonna be weird. Like who's the representation for each show? 
I would imagine Shane still kind of represents SmackDown, but I don't know what that means after him and Kevin Owens. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, who is... Well, who represents Raw then? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know who... If I had to say, I'd say Stephanie again. But we haven't had that because the McMahons were running the show, right? Like, all of the McMahons. And they would... She'd be here. He'd be there. They'd go there. Remember that whole thing? When they all came back, they've the been f- they've been doing what you when did Smackdown for you. Live started the- and they had this whole <laughs> no thing no not with- that far back. Oh. We're talking like maybe a year ago. <laughs> I, I know yeah. when they kiboshed the GMs and Vince, Triple H, Stephanie, and Shane all came out on Monday Night Raw, and they said, "We're here for yeah." What Donovan said oh, for you. This, this is You're for in you. Charge, <laughs> <bro>. You're <laughs> you are the GM of Raw. Yeah. So we played off that for Bring weeks back the on the 2009, show. 2010 days of vote for what match you want to see tonight. <laughs> Was that a thing? <laughs> yeah. They would have like internet voting where you would text what match you wanted to see and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember that actually. Book the show. <laughs> or the wheel. I want the wheel. <laughs> the I want wheel. the wheel back. What wheel? The, the Eric Bischoff had a wheel. They, Eric they, Bischoff they used to have when some shows or Vegas. whatever. They, was, oh, okay. they, would, they would like, what match are we going to have next? It's you and you. What match are you going to have? And they'd spin the wheel. But that was good. Them oh, that's good. actually kind of cool. Shit. I wonder if there's a guy at the bottom like stopping the wheel <laughs> at a specific spot. <laughs> Oh, like he uh, can't I, see part, his fingers. Part, part of me hopes that it was actually random. Random. Yeah. So it's like you just have, I don't know, some weird like the fiend going against Braun Strowman in, I don't know, kendo stick on a pole. Yeah, match. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what about Taboo Tuesday back in the day? Like, yeah. was that yeah. legit? Because I voted on them, motherfuckers. I remember going on WWE.com in two thousand and four and voting for those Taboo Tuesdays with my buddies. But I don't know if it was real or Ooh. if it was they were just taking the the vote. Sorry. We'll never know. Yeah, well, that we won't. <laughs> Hollywood me, Dawn has given me. it to us straight tonight on the round I mean, table, it, it, ladies it could and be gentlemen. Real. It, they, they could do a real thing of that where they have the audience vote for what match they want to see with the whatever given to superstars. You just have to have three finishes planned if you yeah. if there's three options. Yeah. You know what I mean? If there's could, three options, yeah. yeah. Or you can just let the guys like do your thing. You got 15 minutes, yeah. go have your ladder match. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> happens. Figure it out, guys. I don't think that Figure happens. it out. You know? <laughs> the, they did it. It's been done. You I'm know? not saying they shouldn't. We don't need to figure. I just I don't know. never mind. Don't yeah, no, that's about. a good topic, man. It's <laughs> it's you don't you think there's too much planned matches nowadays? Yeah, yeah. Like too With, of I, everything. But, no, not necessarily. I mean, I think it depends on individual, and I can't really say because we don't really know. know yeah, who, like everybody. Like yeah, and we don't really know what's you know who's planning lock up to pin or nothing in between. You know, yeah. you don't know who's who. I mean, when we watched that. A uh, live event here in Oshawa a couple yep. of months back. The and one me, you, and Mike D went to? Yeah. We watched that match, and then we watched the upcoming Raw. A lot of this stuff was the same. Yeah, the tag so match with, with the, the the only difference was the even, finish. Even the Braun one. Strowman match, right? Yep. With so, the kendo like, stick spot where yeah. they put the kendo stick in the corner. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. So even so I think a lot of things are planned and, and beforehand, but then they change things slightly from the main events just to kind of make it feel kind of different. But of course. they seem to plan this stuff way in advance. So I guess it gives them time to rehearse the matches to make sure they don't mess up spots and stuff, which I get a big company would want, especially after the injury scares they've had from a long time ago. So I, I kind of get that. But at the same time, I, I want to see performers like yeah. performing. Perform. <laughs> <laughs> that is, is, can we use that as a quote? I don't have that one on here. But, yeah, I want to see performers perform because you couldn't be more right with that. And that's what fucking wrestling is. Yeah. Now, and on the taboo Tuesday note, I'm I'm I've said this I think on multiple shows in the past. I'm I'm really surprised they haven't like brought something like that back in in this era, especially because it's so easy to vote yeah, now Twitter with your poll. cell phones and Hell Twitter yeah. polls and yeah. Well, that's it's funny you bring up Twitter polls. Oh, should I do it? I was I was almost made another whole episode, but Wade, <laughs> my boy, oh. no, he because he I brought. Thought, I thought you were there though. No, I I don't <laughs> know if I can do it. He brought up the Twitter polls. It's, it's cool. It was a cool story. He was talking about how back in the nineties. When he couldn't just put out a Twitter, do you like this episode of Raw? No, no, no. He would cold call PW Torch VIP subscribers. So people that were subscribing to the newsletter, he would get 100 phone numbers and call these people and get them to to say whatever. He would vote yes or no or whatever the question was. And he would call all those people and then he would have at least somewhat representation of 100 PW Torch subscribers, which are diehard wrestling fans if you're subscribing to a fucking pro wrestling torch website. Um, that's work. Yeah. So, that, <laughs> bro, that guy's been good on good on him though. Oh, know, yeah, so. he's. Yeah. Uh, there isn't. There's a reason I listen to him as much as I do, and it's yeah. because he's been covering it as long as he does or has. Um, 
but yeah, was there anything else kind of big that you guys wanted to, to talk about that kind of came out from this week? Um, I, 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 the... we talked, I talked, I just talked about Don a little bit before the match the, uh, on NXT. Yeah. Uh, Dominic uh, Dijakovic uh, versus Keith Lee. Yes. Like wrestling like an indie match. Like they did a Canadian story from the top rope for a two count. Holy sh! That was the opening match, was it not? I don't know if it was the opening match, but I know it was. Like, uh, I think it opened up the show because I was reading. I didn't watch the show, but I was yeah. reading a full like f- page. It was on PW Torch. It was like kind of all that what had happened on the show, and I think that was the first thing on there. So I wanted to see it. I just I it, I don't. It, it had other people like other wrestlers like Buddy Murphy in like going to Twitter almost bashing the match, saying, "Since when is a pile driver used as a hip toss?" Oh, so mm-hmm. they were kind of saying yeah. like you guys are taking it a little too far here. Yeah. Are we going to get some beef between the Raw and SmackDown crews and the NXT crews, you think? That's a good point to talk about. How are they going to do Survivor Series? I want that. Oh, Raw and SmackDown versus NXT? Yeah. Oh. F- oh, and SmackDown. Not not Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. Nope. Or may- yeah, and maybe we can kind of switch it up, do... Yeah, let the bombs let the bombs <laughs> drop. I think it should be Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, or How, maybe yeah, no, that's I want NXT a part of this. I want oh man, the possibilities that they could do with NXT. Shout out to our boy Sammy Chohan, <laughs> but they could do some serious NWO type shit with NXT. Oh yeah, just in the sense that it could be NXT versus WWE. Yeah. Where you have, you know, let's say you've got Hemberto from fucking Two Hundred Five Live, and then you've got two SmackDown guys and two Raw guys, and five. Well, maybe you just put Undisputed Era in there and throw somebody else in, and there's your representation. But I thought about that as a thing. I don't know what the fuck was. I was thinking about KO and Shane in the match. Oh yeah, and the fact that I think like he still might, he could, he could win. You know, but I don't think it's a given that he wins. Honestly, welcome to the Kevin Owens show. I don't think he's winning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I don't necessarily I think that he I don't would think, win. I don't think he's winning either. I think a couple of weeks back he tweeted a tweet yeah. where the numbers yeah, and we the talked numbers about it two aligned weeks. with NXT. The corresponding to the alphabet, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody's kind of figured that out by now. I just like if he beats, like I don't think they're kicking Shane off TV is 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 kind of the main reason. I'm happy that they're not doing a Hell in a Cell because they totally threw me for a loop when they when he said ladder match because I was like are they really doing another Hell in a yeah, Cell? Yeah, no, they can't. Yeah, I I'm thought they were they... going to. I honestly thought yeah. that he's like one more time in the red cell. So, <laughs> I don't know, but on fire. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that one I think was in the normal cell. It was. Yeah. No, no, that's what I was saying because we could do it in the red oh, cell this different. time. It's diff- you're right and he's bad and he's good. So it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they switched because right. Kevin Owens was the bad yes. guy, right? And yeah. Shane was a good guy last time. Yeah. And Kevin got thrown off the side. I think not the top, but the side. They were both yeah, climbing up. Yeah, I believe up. so. And then Shane did the big jump. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. From Sammy. Sammy. Oh, yeah. That I forgot about. The Sammy save. Because that was when Sammy got interjected and became a heel. And yeah. Got brought back in the storyline and all that stuff. They've actually done a lot with Kevin Owens, man. Oh, he's been, like, he's been he's involved been amazing, in like entire... so many significant yeah. storylines. And yeah, he has been treated he's amazing. Good, he's man. never really... Had to lose, but deservingly so too. Like I'm not, you know what I mean. Oh, absolutely. He's, well, he, in my opinion, he's the best on the microphone in the company. Maybe I would put him and Adam Cole are one two, or yeah, one two. But and and then in the ring, he keeps up with anybody who weighs 150 pounds less than him, and he does just as good as them. So it's like, what can you say? Yeah, yeah. It's, this is what you can say. Welcome to the Kevin Owens show. Um, yeah, we're kind of jumping all over tonight, which is kind of cool. I like it, and it is the round table. It's kind of what this is for. Yeah. Um, but something me and Will talked about last week, and again, it's first time, I, I think it's actually the first time that the three of us have done a round table, but how do you feel about the Dynamite? AEW Dynamite. Oh, Dynamite, eh? yeah. Just the name in general. I'm curious what you think about the the, the, the name Dynamite. It's it's cool, it, you know. Wednesday it, it's Night cool. Dynamite. I, yeah, well, I think... Um, Originally, when they were talking about doing the whole Tuesday thing, yep. it was to be expected. I didn't know if they were going to still run with that same... keep na- Well, I said that to Will last week, how none of that got changed. Everything that was like leaked yeah. way back, Yeah, I kind of respect AEW for not just changing it because it was leaked. Like They kind of stuck to their guns like, okay, everybody knows it's going to be called AEW. They know it's probably going to be called Dynamite, but let's just do it anyway and make it matter. Let's, yeah. Who cares if they already know? We just won't say anything, and then when it does come out, we'll make it. We'll treat it like it's a big deal. I I like the name. I like. I said to him, I like the kind of the color rainbow smoke. Yeah, I seen the poster. Yeah, yeah. It's it seemed like a really cool poster, and I liked how prominent Chris Jericho was in the poster. If yeah. I'm completely honest with you, because 
I mean, he's the fucking champion, yeah, and yeah. he should be treated well. I, who's he fighting, Cody? Yeah. On yeah. the first show? On the, well, on the on pay-per-view. On oh, it's the, at the pay-per-view. At yeah. the pay-per-view. The first show, Is I the six-man, my bad. The six-man, yeah. With the mystery team. Do you have any ideas who you think the mystery team could be? LAX. Other than that? Oh, well, it has to, yeah, I figure it has to be LAX at this point, right? Yeah. I forgot. I totally forgot about that. Because they, they were making, they made their debut and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Don was looking like LAX a couple weeks ago on the show. <laughs> the picture, it was great. You never know you if mean, I could... You mean, uh, you mean in that picture right there? <laughs> well, yeah, that one he does in the studio. But no, it was one of the ones that he posted on Instagram. And I, it was for your music stuff. And yeah. I was like, when's this guy debuting on Raw? You, you might catch him on uh, Wednesdays, buddy. <laughs> you never know. The third <laughs> member. The fourth, <laughs> is there three already? Fourth member? I don't know. Okay. Um, but yeah, anything else? I, I just thought we'd talk a little bit about AEW Dynamite. Uh, AEW Plus on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring that up, Will. On get in. Fight TV. So there is now a way that we can get it here in Canada, the UK, and all that stuff. They're, they're on Fight TV. They're going to have a $5 subscription for AEW so you can watch all of their weekly shows, but that is only the weekly shows. Mm. So not the pay-per-views. Not the pay-per-views. And, and if you just want to watch one episode, they have like a two ninety nine thing where you can just pay for that one episode. Oh, cool. So if you wanted to like every week pay 3 bucks and watch... You could watch it, but is it a one-time watch or is it like a rental where you get it for like twenty-four hours? That I don't know, but I do know. What if do you, you if think? You, Sorry, I, I don't think, mean to. I think a rental. I would. That's say. what I, my yeah. guess would be, right? It might be a rental, but I mean, if you go to ring, a Ring of Honor pay per view that you buy, are you able to go back and watch it on Fight TV? Mm, I wouldn't know. That'd be a Mike D or even you question. I'm not really sure. I mean, I've I I never gone back. And I almost got that show. app a few weeks ago. You remember? I was. Oh well, yeah, he was, almost got it for I Bloodsport. I almost ended up getting it. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't know, but I do know that if you want to watch all the weekly stuff, it's five bucks a month. Nice. Which isn't a bad price, all things considered. Yeah, um, all things considered, you know, I will. I got my ways, so I'm sure I'll I'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit about Hell in a Cell? Since, like I was saying, you guys probably won't be here next week to ah! preview it. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Careful on the mic levels there, Don. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hopefully, I don't have to edit that out later. Was, uh, or not edit it out, I'm, but edit it down. I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm scared. Seth Rollins? Yeah. And The Fiend? And the Fiend. Is it the main event? That. <laughs> sorry. That. that The fun house with the toy. Was, he just gets me every time, man. It's funny. Good shit. Oh, like, the Seth toy, and he broke it, yeah, and he gave a piece to each. Yeah. It's like, you can have a piece, and you can have a piece. <laughs> it's the voices that he does of the other characters, too, which is fucking awesome. Oh, Rambling Rabbit is... Incre- like I fucking I don't know I love that little guy the, Vin- the Vince McMahon doll <laughs> I love that one we watched we showed Mike when he was here the the him feeding Vince the money <laughs> and holy shit that, that that episode was incredible but I I cause I know you guys are big on the fiend yeah and maybe me not so much as much as as much as you I'd say it's not mm-hmm. that I dislike I just know you guys are greatly behind him Wyatt Jim members Yes. Yeah. So we. <laughs> so Muscle man dance. Yeah. Yes. Um. So should he win this championship? Yes. Why? If Don isn't why? Well, <laughs> I'm he, down. I'm he down. Is as the well, hottest but, thing yeah. they have right now. So just they're, give it to him. They, like they said, they had this season premiere coming up for SmackDown or Raw, or whatever. Well, they're, SmackDown they're, like, first episode Raw. They, season they're they're premiere. changing up the, the commentary team. If they want to have someone new leading their brand, like when they when they first went to SmackDown Live and they had Ambrose at the time go to SmackDown with the championship and all that stuff. Yep. It's a yep. great time. Becky Lynch win the belt. Because honestly, first time. Seth hasn't felt that important with the belt. Honestly, in my opinion. No, that I agree. It, it, it he's felt kind of stale ever since he won it. His so. promos are. It's not that he. It, they just don't connect. It's yeah. not even like he does a shitty job. They just they're just not connecting with the crowd. It feels like just generic man with championship, really. Which is unfortunate because Seth is just. I mean, one of us. Like he's just a diehard wrestling fan that grew up. Did wrestling and then got into the WWE and won the fucking championship at WrestleMania and like it, I almost I don't feel bad for him because he's obviously in an amazing position he's a fucking Universal Champion right now but mm-hmm. it's just like he finally is there and it's like it's not it's just not the right time that's what's crazy yeah. about wrestling is you can do everything perfect and correctly and right and get to that spot but sometimes if it's not your time yet it's not your time yet well that's the thing like to talk, to tie this together is. Well, Bray won the WWE Championship, and it just wasn't the time. Exactly. Yeah. When he won it. But they snatched <clears> it away <throat> from him pretty quickly. But get... it was weird, that whole... Him, be- him they... beating Cena in a Hell in a Cell, and and, or to... in a elimination it, it, chamber. AJ. And... He pinned AJ. 
No, no, but Cena was the champion going into that yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's what I meant by beating Cena. But you're right, he did pin AJ, but Cena was the WWE champion going into that match. And then just to... But it, I don't even mean the way that it was quick. I just... I don't even know if that was the time for him for them to do that. Yeah. It, it, it felt a little... Uh, too little, too late at that point. And they never... They, not never. They rarely fucking just shebang. Just pull the trigger. Just... That's why I'm down. Because they rarely do that. And they got something good here. And I would just... They we're, we're all sick of it anyway. We're not really big on this Seth Rain, right? So no, but I just, just don't... take a chance. Let's do it. Fuck it. Mm. It's, it's he's had a good. It, it's Seth's... something new. It's mm. one of the hottest things you have on your show right now. I... Pull the trigger. Go for I'm it. I'm just worried that it goes away. If that, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to lose that yet. Mm-hmm. I don't. And and I, as much as he is the biggest thing in the company right now, it is still a very gimmicky gimmick. Like yep. it's it's very hokey and very different and very. Not main eventy, you know what I mean? It, it, well, what what if it, they who's were... to say? It, sorry to cut you off. It can become that. I'm not saying it can't. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't think we need to rush into things. And I also, as much as I know, it's not Seth's. We talk. I just said it. Y- you gotta at least have him beating Brock. Like it's gotta mean something. Like you know what I mean? He finally beat him at SummerSlam. Clean, no blow, blow, no nothing. Three curb stomp, one, two, three. I was there, not celebrating. Whatever. You, it means nothing if the fiend just comes up a month, not even a month later, or a month later, and just snatches the title. I know he beat Braun too, but I don't know. It just, I, it doesn't. You gotta at least, I think you gotta you give can, it a, a the good college fucking try. A, li- a little bit farther here is what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. If we get to Rumble and it's the same with Seth and there's still the same non connections. Well, he had long enough, man, before the Brock shit too, even like we all, but that was to me, at least, I don't know. I can't speak for you guys, but to me that never, because he never really beat Brock. Like Mm. you had to kick him in the nuts and you had to pull all these stops. And now we, he actually beat him and Brock's moved on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, I am the same guy that just said it's not Seth's time. So I, I don't know what the right decision is. That's why I'm the one talking about it on a podcast and not the one making decisions at WWE. But I just, again, I don't want to ruin the Bray, Bray stuff by just giving him the belt right now and then what? Well, 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 to, to counter that, what I was going to say is because of the way Bray has been treating the Fiend, it's like he's a completely different person. Mm-hmm. Just because the Fiend wins, it doesn't mean every Firefly Funhouse thing is going to have to have Bray holding the championship. Holding the title. It could be he just mentions the Fiend as a champion. He did a blah blah blah, but you never see it there. But, but the Fiend still has a champion. Even if it is there, though, I'm not against it. But are people going to start because I, is Bray Wyatt and the Fiend going to become too regular because he's the champion and people always bitch that they want the champion on the show every week? I don't think the Fiend Bray Wyatt needs to be on the show every week, even if it's just the Firefly Funhouse. Mm-hmm. Well, he doesn't. The, always, well, he doesn't always have to wrestle every show, like yeah. what people are saying. Like you can kind of have that thing where you're there. You but I don't think that's what people house. chirp Brock about. But I, if Brock was backstage <clears throat> with the belt every week, I don't think we would get the chirps. Exactly. No, no but that's the thing, and that like you can still have Bray there in some capacity, but if he's doing the Funhouse or if he does an attack on somebody as the Fiend, like he can still be very involved in the show as the champion too. But I, I hear you in every sense of the way. I just, I don't like Rollins. Like, I was rooting for Braun yeah, well, anyway. So, like, I, I'm i not a fan of him as the champion. So, I'm, and I'm, the fact that I'm more of a fan of the whole Bray thing, like, I'm just saying. Why not? Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. It could go, it could go completely, you know. And, and that belt would look good on the Fiend, you have to admit. It could go completely wrong. It no, it would look, good, and it would look great on the Fiend. And, and what if they even tried to do something where... And I would like this if, let's say, Bray Wyatt acts like the Fiend has the belt. Mm. Not Bray. Mm. Just the Fiend. So we're on the Firefly Funhouse and he makes a comment like, oh, Fiend's got the belt. That's what, yeah, that's what you he know, said. Did yeah. you say that? Yeah. That's oh. what I was saying. Like, the Fiend has a championship, but not Bray Wyatt. Mm. Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. My bad. I miss. I thought you said the, the like, opposite. Like, like, like you meant having. people. Yeah, yeah. That Because that I could be more okay with. But again, it's, 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 it's just the, I hope they don't blow their fucking load and, and get you know too early with the Bray Wyatt stuff because he hasn't been around that like I know it's been trickled out but the the reason we all love him is because it was drip 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 it wasn't just here well, everything mean, they, they've the been fiend. they've been dripping this since but SummerSlam see that, like, yeah. he made his first made his debut in the ring with the Fiend when at I w- SummerSlam I was there and, th- and that's what I was going to say too I've, they've but he they've, hasn't been on every Raw since SummerSlam yeah no but they've built they have built it 
long enough. And Bray, it's not like Bray's a, a new guy. He's not a, an XT call-up or a guy who's just popped up and doing this. Like, Bray's a guy who's been in the company for a long time. So for him to get that opportunity too, like, I think, I think this is the right move to make. Is it going to happen? I honestly, I'm not 100% sure that it's going to happen here at Hell in no. a Cell. I don't know either. And I, but I like gonna... that. I like the fact that I don't know. I like that. I'm interested to watch. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I just, I basically, I just don't want to get used to seeing the fiend. Mm. I want it to still be an attraction. Yeah, You're so. not used to him now though? Like, no, definitely not. I don't think he so hasn't like, been on the show that much. Even like the, the last rest, two like, weeks to me has almost been too much that he's, he's been in the main event of the last two weeks of Monday Night Raw mm. attacking Seth. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think we needed both weeks. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, I don't think... I just think less is more with that character. That's yeah, no, I agree. That's all. I agree. I don't want him popping up on every Raw. But that's what I mean. The The benefit of this split personality thing, you can do the Funhouse stuff. Fiend doesn't have to show up. Yeah. Whether the title's there or not, you can do that. That I like. I like <laughs> that idea. If they went forward with the no championship being on Mr. Rogers' shoulder and just being in the Fiend when he comes out or whatever, that, that could be something good. Um, I don't want to talk about everything, but what about the, the women's stuff? What about the Hell in a Cell rematch? Well, not rematch, but we've got, you know, Becky Lynch and Sasha fighting in a Hell in a Cell. Sasha saying, you know, you don't know. I've been in a Hell in a Cell before. Bitch, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> like, true. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I don't, but I'm excited for this match and I like the four horsewomen stuff. Yeah. I like everything they've done, I think, except for Bailey, because I don't know. Like what's going on with her? Right well, now? I just don't know. Like she yeah, comes honestly, out with the Bailey just, buddies, it, and she just feels like she's the hype woman for Sasha, even though she's the Raw Women's Champion. Kinda, but I, then again, I felt bad for Sasha this week because I was watching their entrance, and Sasha once again she's walking to the ring doing nothing. Bailey's music is playing, and I was like, "We're back to fucking before WrestleMania. <laughs> this is the same shit we were. She was bitching about before we were at WrestleMania. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, she's got a big match coming up, so we knew that wasn't the end all be all. But it's like. You literally had a tag team match with Bailey. Yeah. On Raw. <laughs> I thought that immediately when they first And her music like, didn't play. Like she their Bailey's music was playing as she walked behind Bailey to the ring. So I thought that was just weird because it was what she was so con- you know, concerned and upset about prior to Mania was the lack of, you know, I don't know. I still think that that was a little overblown as far as how upset she got. Whether it was a work or not, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. That's a whole nother uh, Definitely. can of worms. But yeah, the uh I'm, the I'm hell in a cell. excited for the match. Same. I can say so, that. just just to make a bit of conversation. Of course. If if any of the one the one of the four current horse women, yep, mm-hmm. not the ones at NXT, the ones we have now, if any of them were the to, real ones, if any of them were to Whoa. leave the WWE, <laughs> yes. which one would be the first? Well, I mean, it's kind of the obvious answer is kind of Sasha, but I. Dude, I, I don't I, think I, any of them would leave. No, but he's saying if, if like you if have, have to, to pick, pick one, one that's leaving, I don't think it's Becky at this point because of the her last year in WWE. I don't think it's Charlotte because as much as Flair may or may not be friends with the WWE all the time, I don't think she would leave. It's but I'll talk about her later. Um, Bailey, maybe it would be Bailey or Sasha, and if I had to pick between Bailey and Sasha, I'm picking Sasha. So that's kind of why or how I've come to that conclusion. About. Yeah, I mean, what about I, you, Will? I, don't know, I probably have to pick Sasha as well, but at the same time, I feel like the way that they booked her so far, it almost feels like if she were to leave, it wouldn't be that big of a loss. Like they're not sure if she might end up leaving at some point. The biggest loss would be the fact that the four horsewomen weren't all together anymore, and I'm not just yeah. saying that to be a prick. Like that's yeah, probably that's, the truth. Yeah. They, they, they know like where there's smoke there is fire when Sasha may not be coming back next time she gets a contract extension or whatever yeah so if they do book her in that way if she does leave it's not like there's a gaping hole in the roster when she does or if she does leave fair enough yeah I just do you, so, you, so you're ruling you don't think she's winning the championship then I mean she might I don't know how much longer she has on her contract because I, I don't see her winning a championship and then asking for a release that doesn't make sense to me And no no not at all and so, I yeah, I, I I don't know if she's winning or not. I I can't say, but I mean, if she doesn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, fair enough. I I think that's kind of at least for myself ruled off the cards. I don't even. Yeah, I wasn't even. I did doesn't even cross her, my uh, mind now. Ever, ever since she did kind mm-hmm. of come back, but I mean, it's it's definitely a talking point. And like I said, out of the four of them, I I think personally she would be the one to go. Question though, now, do you what do you think about going into this match? Do you think um, 
Sasha gets it, this, or do you think Becky continues her reign? Well, I obviously hope Becky continues her reign, being such a big Becky fan. <laughs> Is, is this a Hell in a Cell match? It yeah. is a Hell in a okay. Cell match, yeah. Because that's what I was saying. Sasha was saying she's been in one before. And I was like, oh, well, you kind of lost. But uh, at least you've been in one, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know, Don. I, I, obviously, I want Becky to win, but I don't. I wouldn't put it past them putting it on Sasha now. I just don't know where Becky goes from there. If Becky loses, she's definitely getting a rematch as much as we don't have standard rematch clause in WWE anymore. I still think they'd give her some kind of rematch. Hmm. I uh I don't think so. I think I think Becky's gonna win actually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Something's just something. I feel that her reign is gonna continue a little, little more. Is that what you want? Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, same I'm down. Here. Yeah. Well, obviously. Yeah. Like I said, I think to add to the to the reign and to the whole thing of her winning it at Mania and it's gotta there's gotta be just more. And this is another piece to the puzzle in my opinion if she can overcome this. And it's. Pretty awesome because it started last year yeah. before SummerSlam yeah. and then led to her winning the titles at Mania and then led to now here. So it's when it's all said and done, this like the the DVD, whatever the story of Becky Lynch is going to be fucking awesome. That's what I'm saying. Like I want a lengthy reign, so I I'm okay with her winning. I want another piece to the puzzle. I'm okay with this going all the way to later on and her fucking turning heel and switching it up and conti- like I I'm all about long title reigns and shit like that yeah no I, I would like that if it if it's not something like that it, it would have to be like a Shayna Baszler coming up and being the one to finally and I think Ronda will be in the picture at some point yeah I don't think cross paths again you know at some point def- I don't know definitely. I'm not saying no no definitely I, I just don't think it would be the first like I don't think she would lose the title to Ronda because mm-hmm. then it's like she's losing the title from the person that she beat for the title um but yeah, that uh, what about, is there? Are they having? Is there a Charlotte Bailey match as well, or no? I don't think so. At, At least pay- not that I know of. No, same here. I didn't think so either. But I don't know if 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 Bailey's having a match on the the SmackDown show as well. Um, I don't know. There's a couple other little things that I wanted to, to talk about, but some of them, like I don't know if you guys have anything to say about Eric Rowan. Probably not much. <laughs> They're having the uh, the tag match, aren't they having a tag? Well, match? yeah, me and you called so, that before. It never, yeah. it was never recorded, but we did call it because we talked about the fact on the phone that we thought this is obviously leading to a tag match. And Daniel Bryan was that a babyface turn? Answer um, this with one word answer. See, do, I didn't... do you want me and Roman Reigns to beat the crap out of the? Yes, yes, yes. So is he babyface now? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it seems yeah. like it. Mm. I don't know if I like that. It's okay, man. I mean, he had his heel run as champion. Rowan had, like, he cut a promo again. Who This guy has impressed me in the last month or so as far as his speaking ability. He's better than I would have expected it to be. But he was he was talking about um, people that he didn't, or people he didn't trust. I can't remember what it was, but he just threw this random line in where he's just like, and my old friend Dan told me. <laughs> and I was just like, what? Like, <laughs> where the fuck? Fuck you, did, Dan. <laughs> yeah, like, where the <laughs> fuck did that come from? So that I, I just because I wrote that down, I figured I'd talk about it. But yeah, the four horsemen match. The I, sorry, no, I was gonna say I like Rowan as the as the talker. Did did um did Harper say anything since the return? I didn't catch that. No, no. But honestly, this was the one thing, and I did write it down. And I forgot to bring it up. Rowan beat DB decisively mm-hmm. before this happened, like one, two, three in the middle of the ring, and I was like, holy shit. And then, and then uh, Harper, I don't know if Harper had come out right before the finish or after, but either way, Harper came out and they started beating him up and then Roman came out after for the save. And then that's when we got Daniel Bryan, answer this in a one word answer or whatever. Something along those, basically he was saying, answer this, yes. Are they still doing matching gear? Uh, like, ro- like, ro- are they going to be back to the bludgeon? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, good. If anything, they're both going to wear be- man, <laughs> man, metal band t- cool. t-shirts <laughs> like, like Rowan does. On a side note, not really, but attached to this is I, I want to say with Daniel Bryan because you were saying hey, you're not too huge on maybe the baby face. I just the Bryan. heel stuff's great, so but, I don't really need see, to go know, back to it. The good thing about this guy, man, is like I think he's one of the few guys who can just he can do both well, and like not everybody can. I feel like AJ is a guy like that. Uh, I feel like Miz is not a guy like that. You know <laughs> what I mean? I I feel like Seth. I don't know. I kind of no. Think I think Miz is more of a guy that like that than <clears throat> Seth. No, I, I I'm saying not Seth. Like I don't think Seth is one of these guys. I'd say Brian, uh, you know AJ. I got to. Th- I'd have to think they, about they a few others. But those roles. are two guys for sure that I could say like they're good at both. Really well. Like back even when Brian was first coming up, like he was U.S. champion and oh yeah, he lost a. 
I just feel like Brian's flipped a lot. That's my only. It's not that I don't think he. Can, I definitely think he yeah. can do both, and I've seen him do both very well. I just. I, it hasn't even really been a year, has it? Uh, yeah. Like he turned heel. That happened like before the last Survivor Series. Said. It's been a little. Oh, is that what it was before yeah. Survivor Series? Yeah, because he beat AJ and then he tried to fight Brock at Survivor Series because he was the champion. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Because I was wondering, I'm like, why was he? What happened there? But yeah, and he, that's when he started wearing the black trunks, is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the hemp championship. <laughs> oh, I, that thing's amazing. I wish it you could is. buy one. But that list, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, man? Like, there's there's not a lot of guys that are I, I feel like can that really versatile and yeah, and do well and actually generate heat. You know a, who the top a, the top one is. Like the one. Oh, who you got here? Whoa! <laughs> when it's a beach, oh. the man himself. Man. I wish I had a sound effect, but I figured I'd just sing it myself. <laughs> get the point across that way. I miss, oh. I miss show. So do I. He's got I a do. TV show coming out. Yeah, soon. I heard about like a sitcom or something. It. Like not like a. Is it, is it called the Big Show? No, that would be hilarious <laughs> if it was like. You know, the big, big like the an big hour show long. Show. Like an, it's an hour sitcom. It's the big <laughs> show. You know, again, most sitcoms are only. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't funny. Um, um, how about is, his name is Dan on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Murphy. <laughs> um, how about uh, the new entrance music for the OC? Tell me, you guys saw this? I honestly did not. Oh see. my! I okay. heard about give it. Give it to me. Give it to me. It. Let talk let, amongst yourselves yeah, while I find this. Then I'm gonna have to pull this. <laughs> okay, wait. So you said you heard about it. So what did you hear? Good, I bad. Ju- I just heard that they were getting rid of the CFOs music because apparently the CFOs isn't under the WWE banner anymore. So they've been trying to get a bunch of people new music, especially before the new video game comes out. CFO, what's that? That's who used to do all the music. The CFOs. That's who used to do all the music for. Oh, everybody. that's like a band. Yeah, mm-hmm. got gotcha. you. That's who WWE, so that's who, like, after yeah. Jim Johnson, they've had CFOs. I yeah. would assume, yeah. So I don't, I don't know who they got doing it now, but that was just what I heard. So about it, it wasn't AJ's music, and it wasn't the uh, classic Dan Dan. What do you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. But huh. I, I'm excited. I guess I can say that because I feel like it was a weird, and they would have a thing where it's like one week it's AJ's music. One week they're coming out as the club and it's the club music I mean, or the OC or whatever o- you want. Omen to call. in the Sky was a great song. The last one they did, I yeah, yeah I like the, it. the one I the like one it. they had before this yeah. new one now. It was actually a really good one. The yeah. CFOs actually had some pretty good songs. Mm-hmm. My only issue with their music is that re- really it's it just kind of, instead of feeling like a song, it was felt like a one minute thing that they just the, looped, the loop, for yeah, looped yeah. four yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right? I I'm where, hoping I can find it. Keep talking amongst where's, yourselves. Where's, but where's Jim Johnson's music? It felt like the, an entire song. Yeah, it like, was music. You, you can listen to Randy Orton's theme song and its entire song. Yes, you know? yeah. So that's my only gripe with the CFOs, but the, the songs, the one minute loops that they would make, they were pretty good. AJ's AJ's music was is good too. I like his yeah, music, AJ's, but but I've all, I've said to Nick before, like I feel like there should be. A difference, like I don't want them all just coming out to AJ's music. Yeah, and I think even throughout, you know, the fact that AJ's a, he's the bad guy now. Like I think they should all always come together and have whatever this new. Hopefully, it's good. This new song and that be the thing. Yeah, where it's more recognizable, like that they're a crew. They're always standing together. Yeah. On the topic of themes, uh, some people I've seen are complaining about the the Kabuki Warriors theme because now they they've come back to Raw mm-hmm. or SmackDown. So what they did, instead of creating a custom theme for them, they just kind of did a mashup of oh, their fuck. themes. We're back to the mesh. Yeah. yeah. Or just like cut well, five minutes of this and then five minutes of their song and put it together. Yeah, see, that's like, the worst when they do that. And I'll give props to this on NXT. I've noticed that uh, Breeze and Fandango, like their music now, complete new music. Finally, why couldn't we have done this from the fucking get-go? Instead, <laughs> we got the bullshit mashup of the two when back when they were on the main roster, but it's like now they're on NXT, they got new music, and it works. It's just a thing for them. I mean, the mashup can do well, like Rated RKO. They had a pretty good mashup. What about I, Jerry KO? That I, was not very I, good. I'm just not a fan of them. Like, I don't know why. For I, me. I understand. Or it's not, not, not Jerry KO, sorry. Jerry Show. Jerry Show. Jericho <laughs> and Big Show. Shout out to the Look Back Show, 2008, <laughs> dropping very soon. <laughs> uh, Hell in a Cell 2008. I think I got it here, though, boys. And the opponents, accompanied to the ring by the phenomenal United States champion, AJ Styles, representing the OC, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson! Double kick. The United front that has dominated Monday Night Raw 
in recent months. Harder to hear because this is like an now actual clip of the show, but still. Have the opportunity to settle a long brewing score with the Viking Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. So so far, fuck. I gotta hear that lick on on it, to actual, watch them. Yeah, hundred percent. I had to ask. If, back to my previous point. If it's as long as it's not a one minute loop. <laughs> That sounded good though. That it, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was some good shit. Like I got to admit, like whenever they do a harder like a, a metal song, yeah. even when the CFOs did, it was pretty damn good. Yeah, and there was words. Yeah, fuck yes, screaming, but it was words. Still words, man. No, no, I hear it. and bro, it has that. It sounded like an NXT theme song for, excuse me, a takeover. I love that yeah, shit. It did. We need more words. We've said <laughs> that. Go back and listen to the theme song roundtable. I was going to ask Will if he's ever checked out that episode of the round table. We did a specific theme song based round table back. I don't know. I probably in the thirties, the late thirties. Yeah. As far as uh, episode numbers go. Um, and, and yeah, they, uh, they, we, and we talked about invite all... me. No, I don't know if you'd been on the sh- No, you'd I... definitely been on the show since then, but I, yeah, we, we I, I forget I, who I'm was hurt. on. <laughs> I've heard. I'm just realizing now though. I don't even know if I said the name of this episode at the beginning of the show. <laughs> I'll have to go back and listen because I don't you, think you I did. You don't know how many hours at work I sit there just grading apples or whatever, and I, I'm humming NXT themes <laughs> to my head. Like I'm thinking Adam Cole, the Undisputed Era, Shayna Baszler's going through my head. <laughs> Yo, while we're on the topic of themes, and I got Will here, I gotta ask you: What do you like the new Kenny shit? Because I don't. And me and you Mike don't? were talking about it off record. You don't. You don't like his the new theme. No. I, I, I just I, love the old one so much. The old one was good. H- Hopes and Dreams, the one he had for his last match in New Japan. Yeah. Which I don't know if you're a big video game guy. Or yeah, when he did the entrance. The right? Undertale. Yeah. The Undertale. Final Fantasy. Entry, yeah. Undertale. Oh, Undertale, man, my bad. That was actually really sick. They talked to Toby Fox about that, the guy who made Undertale. He was all cool with it. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. I love that entrance. I kind of wish he hoped, uh, kept it because it was that cool. Yeah. But I like in his new song that he references all of his old songs. The And the entrance, like when he's doing like the, the build up. Okay, he I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, Devil Sky. I think he meant uh, referenced his DDT theme. He brought up the hopes and dreams. From okay, the, so that's pretty I, cool. I, I like how he referenced all the old themes, and I dig the songs. I I actually like the song. It just I think it threw me off at first. I was like, ah, I, I get it. It's something why? new. No one likes change, but the song is good. Yeah, Young In, Bucks theme is fantastic. Cody's theme is he's had that for years. Uh, yeah, and I rock fantastic. with that. I like yeah, that one. Cody's yeah. theme is great. Cody's I love Darby Allen's theme. fits Cody. Yeah. I wouldn't say I love that song by any means. I love it. But I it's like very it. Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Like when I hear that music, it fits. But I also fucking hate the I think that's the same group so. who does actually the Miz's song. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of. Really? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, I forget the, the name. I, yeah, it slips my mind. But if you listen to the vocals, you can. It, it is. It's like bit. Johnny and Candace where their music sounds very similar <laughs> too. I feel like that's probably the same band <laughs> that does there too. Yeah. It, it reminds me of Johnny's, honestly. Like, it has that same sort of, like, you hear it, and it's just like, yep, that yeah. music wouldn't work with anybody else. Mm-hmm. And Darby Allen, like I said, Darby Allen's theme is fantastic. Not super familiar with it, I'm going to have to. It's, it's not a common one to hear. I don't know if there's any high quality versions of it on YouTube. There's a pretty, like, low quality version of it, but it's actually really good and mm-hmm. suits his character super well. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, what? You put your headphones back <laughs> on. <laughs> no, but, um,. Hey, the only thing I want to get into um, until we get to the F1 update, unless there was anything you guys wanted to talk about, is the... Uh, well, yeah, we'll get to that, too. No, no, I want... Because you, cause you brought up the name Johnny. Oh, okay, yeah. Because this is another thing you wanted to hide <laughs> from you there, Don. What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, Mundo's back. What? Johnny Everything, buddy. No, he's not. Johnny, that's the reports. <laughs> what? The reports are that Johnny Everything is... Where? Well, Dumb-a-dumb-a-dee. all over the, the, the wrestling... Where is he? Dirt sheets. As they call them. Where is he back? WWE. No, the talks are that he's coming back to WWE. Really? He but signed which the contract. Brand, you know what well, we'll find out during the Is he the Johnny Morrison. fucking NXT now? Oh. Or is he Johnny Raw? I hope so. That's <laughs> what I hope. Johnny Smackdown. Johnny Smackdown. Is Raw's going to get the shine end of this fucking draft, let me tell you. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can get anybody we can get over No, nah, but I'm glad. I need John fucking Morrison with that entrance and that Joe slow. Mo for show. That slow mo. They fucking... better call Melina. <laughs> I want she's a him and Miz reunion, man. Ooh. Let's do that. Let's fuck Miz. Let's, get let's light Nitro. up the fucking tag division. I want Joey and Johnny. <laughs> no, fuck <laughs> Joey. Don't look M&M. the same. He's got a, <laughs> I want Eminem. <laughs> no, give me Miz and him and those. Yeah, I want let's him light shaking those up. belts from their crotch. <laughs> Bro, him and Miz were good. I never saw him and Miz. Unfortunately, I didn't see it live, but like I've, it's good shit. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I do want to see him at least once when he makes his return to do the old the the, the Morrison intro, the oh. slow mo and. 
Oh, yeah, with the glasses and the, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, I forgot the, about the, that. The tie-dye background and even the same song, just for at least once. He Another is, one of those uh, songs that fits the fucking character. Definitely. Yeah. Perfect. Definitely. Totally. Yeah, that's, I totally, yeah, I'm happy you brought that up too, man, because it's definitely a big deal. That's fucked. I, this is live. I didn't know that. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Shit. See what happens when you stay away from social media for a little bit, boys? You, you learn some things. It's, it's like you've been living under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget what I was going to say as far as, as which brand, but anyway, did anybody get a chance to see Baron Corbin this week? Or King Corbin? Oh, no, I wish I did, though. As we now call him. <laughs> nope. You, no chance, really. No. Nope. Oh, I will. I well, I really wish that Don was able to hear um, the roundtable last week, because holy shit, did uh, our yeah, boy uh, will hear a bit of a rant? Yeah, are you feeling it? Or are you not feeling it? What's what's up here? <laughs> well, I, I did mention before the show there was part of part of the Baron Corbin rant or that I didn't get into was kind of just in, in, in at WWE in general. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know. If now is the time or place because it's kind of in the past. But I, I can kind of bring it up if you're. You can know. get into some stuff for sure. I'm just trying to find a picture of Baron Corbin here in his king gear because. Oh, oh, I think I did see. I did come fucking, across. Uh, I I just had to. It was fucking amazing. Like, <laughs> amazing. One of the best things that they've done in weeks, because, I I was so mad about the no king gimmick and then yeah. everything got all crushed up. But and then I was thinking like this is fucking perfect. He's got a. Bl- Did you see it? No. Oh man, I gotta try and find a picture. He's got a black crown. It looks like something Maleficent would wear or something like that, with like a wolf skin. Yeah. See, I think I've seen a little a pelt, pelt, pelt yeah. and 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 a black sep. It just looks like you know what? If Baron Corbin is gonna be a king, mm-hmm. then this is this I can okay. do. I can deal with this because at least he's not dressed like a fucking waiter anymore. We have a reason that he dresses like this. Yeah. And honestly, like, I think I, I'm not into that kind of shit, but it looks cool. It it looks like it's the type of shit that he probably had that crown. Oh, like I actually have a crown that's like it's on one of my skulls <laughs> that I keep in in the living room. I can just grab that from home. If you guys get this scepter that I was already looking at anyway, like, I mean, I can just keep it afterwards. And anyway, so is that is that your Baron Corbin impression? Yeah, like, <laughs> love it. <laughs> no, I, I I just mean it looks like something that he that not only his character would would have, but the guy is Baron, it scomy. It is a bit scomy, but it it it's actually kind of nice. I really want to try and find a picture. I wish you you guys had heard because it's they always reference it on Wade's show. One time there was a guy that called into Wade Kelly's show, and talked about Baron Corbin being his neighbor. And how that Baron was his neighbor. I mean, this could have been fabricated, yeah, but yeah. I, I would imagine it was real. And he's like, yeah, like, he's really a douche. Like, he's actually like that in real <laughs> life. Like, this guy called into the radio show and basically just told, like, Wade and the, whoever else was on the show that night about how Baron Corbin was actually the way he is on TV is kind of, like, he's just a bit of a mean guy. Like, kind of just like your neighbor, you know, well, get do, off they, my they, lawn kind of thing. They say your, your best character in wrestling is you turned up to 11. Which would make sense. So, you know, because the guy on TV is a, Big time douche. So turn back eleven <laughs> dials, maybe. Yeah, it might make some sense. But I can't find. I'm trying to find a damn picture. Maybe I'll show you guys after, it, or when we're done recording. But it was just his his crown. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Everybody, go look at WWE's Instagram and check out the crown, the black Ooh. crown, wolf skin and black scepter that okay. he came out with. Because it actually, you know what I mean. Yeah. It, it didn't kinda, look like the Dollarama crown that they gave him the week kinda, before. Kind of like when Sheamus had his. Similar. I never saw crown. that, but yeah. It was like the red crown, but it wasn't like a normal crown. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never saw it live is, is what I meant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, as much as the Baron Corbin stuff isn't the best, and me and Will talked about it last week, and at least... Why? What's not the best about it? Well, just him winning that thing, and then they've... <laughs> well, no, you can bring it up again, yeah, man. I, I the, the rant has passed. I just want to... Admit. Will made a... Like, he brought up some good points about the fact that, like, this guy was fired by WWE and told like you can't run this show anymore. You're not good enough. And now they're push like it just didn't make a lot of sense. It's like they didn't trust him. It was the point of he, he debuted won the Andre the Giant Battle Memorial oh, yeah, Royal. He won money back. in the bank. Yeah. He, he's had so many other title opportunities and all of them have just been, they've written him in a way that he's lost all of them. So now he wins King of the Ring. What why should I care that he won King of the Ring because he's not wh- Yeah. If you I, look I'm at it from invested, a- like, he's what's he going to do from this point? Hmm. Nothing because that's all he's done before, which makes sense because when you look at the money in the banks and the, and the, what did they do with the him winning the Andre the Giant? I mean, I know they've done nothing with anybody winning that match, but still, 
the money in the bank didn't lead to anywhere. Like they haven't written him in a good way. So it's like, why do we expect him to be written in a good way now? I would only say maybe just because, le- like, in defense of that, that, leading into it, he he did win the tournament and he beat some pretty credible people. That's true. Get, he, but yeah. he's always done that. Problem is, he's always lost when it mattered. Yeah. So like he's he's been number one contender for mm-hmm. the Universal Championship for a couple months when Rollins we had it, and he you lost all those matches and he he blew up blew the Money in the Bank briefcase trying to roll up Jinder Mahal when he was champion. And, yeah, but and, I think in a w- in a way you kind of answered your own thing here. They they got a fucking rock hard for this guy, and that's why he's gotten so many. Like they somebody they really like him. There's something I, about him that they see and they want to. Like I think one day he'll probably end up as champion. Well, probably, oh, yeah. I wouldn't. It's just at the same time, at this point, they given him so many opportunities and storyline, and then just at this point, I'm, I'm come along be over it. Yeah, he, he has is, come yeah. along, man. Like he's a heel. He's not like that baby face that gets snubbed at every turn. It's mm. he's a heel that's getting his comeuppets. Yeah, yeah, and and like I just said, like the match that he had with Gable in that main event, that was a good match. That was me and Newell and everybody that was watching that night. Like I said last week, Wait, we yeah. we were sh- silent in the fucking room when that match was on. I mean, we were talking about how we would have been celebrating a lot more if Chad go on and how awesome that would have been the moment of all the guys hanging out and, and him winning. But still, it's it, we were invested in Corbin's... I don't know. He's come a long way. He's really yeah, yeah, yeah. come a long way. And like I said, at least they're owning this gimmick. Mm-hmm. gimmick. King gimmick, if yeah. I could speak tonight. Um, but yeah, anything else from you guys for the? No, it's good. Fresh coat of paint, you know, for him. Maybe we'll see. That it is. Anything else? No, we're good. I know you had a bit of stuff that you wanted to talk about at the beginning too, Will. But I think we got to most of it. No. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, look out for the look back show dropping soon. We're going to be dropping another Hell in a Cell look back, and then potentially we've got to talk about dropping, redropping the the SmackDown look back that's on YouTube as yeah. well because that hasn't been out. So stay tuned for those. <laughs> Alrighty then, Will. I'm gonna just make Will come for the F1 update from now on. <laughs> just but, come, like, just let me know. I'm outside the door. Just can I come in yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can come in now, Will. <laughs> but no, I, I honestly I missed having Don because Don is one of my favorite parts about this because he kind of gets to be like the listeners oh, okay. in the sense that he learns. And I'm still waiting on that fucking race for you to come watch. Hey, we scheduled that. Oh yeah, we, we did. Yeah, Which we one did. was it? Uh, uh, Mexico. A couple weeks, right? What you tell me? I know it's in a. It's, it's a daytime one because we talked about <clears throat> how like Mexico. No, I think we said the nighttime one. Did we? Yeah, I believe so. Because oh, I'll you're be gonna working and you're gonna crash. Yeah. On the Saturday. Yeah. Oh, so is he Abu Dhabi? No, it was uh, Suzuka. Oh, okay. So I think he's going to come over on the Saturday night, watch like after work, and then the race starts at like 2 a.m. Saturday Saturday night. I mean, you're welcome to come too. We can have a big F1 party. Remind me of that because I forget dates and stuff. Yeah, no worries. Um, Same. Yes, I think I got it marked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wrote it down, but... Singapore this past weekend, Will, my mm. favorite race of the year. My, f- you know, I it wasn't was, a bad one. No, it definitely wasn't a bad one. It, it wasn't as good as some of the Singapore races that we've had, but no it, crash gate. Yeah, it uh, it was certainly good. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, because he do, he doesn't know. He doesn't. Yeah. Th- <laughs> okay. There's a story back when the race first uh, first race in Singapore, for, 2008. Yes. At, in the middle of the race, uh, Fernando Alonso was racing for Renault, and he was leading the race. He just made a pit stop. However, he didn't have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race. Oh. So what his team did is they radioed his teammate and told him to crash. Into the wall to bring out a safety car. <laughs> so that Fernando could win the race. So he had enough fuel to make it to the end. And then a year later, after Renault dropped uh, PK, who was his teammate, PK went to the media and was like, yeah, Renault told me to crash in that race. Because they told him, apparently, they told him, I mean, it was pretty confirmed, but they told him, like, your seat is guaranteed next year if you do this. Oh. And then he got fired. And he's like, oh, all right, well, fuck you guys then. Well, I'm going <laughs> to tell the media what you told me to do <laughs> to yes. keep my seat. Fuck. So, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was 10 years, or I guess 11 years ago. That ha- They call it Crashgate. Oh, my God. So that was, it, it didn't come out until a year later. That all this, and then guys were getting fired from Renault, and then Renault ended up pulling out of Formula One eventually, and just becoming an engine supplier for until 2016 when they came back. Fuck, they fired the guy. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, he kind of he held it down for his team, man. <laughs> yeah, and they, and still, they still let him go. 
I don't know who they signed. Like, who was it that came in to Renault to replace Nelson? Ooh, I have no idea. We'd I have don't, to look that up because he better have been was, good. It was <laughs> someone. It was someone. But the irony is, in that race in 2009, okay. he crashed in the same spot. Who? Nelson? No, the guy that. Oh, the, the guy that they replaced. They replaced. <laughs> he crashed in the same spot, Jesus. but not intentionally. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah. So, that's a bit of a history lesson on Singapore. Um, Actually, 08 was kind of a pretty scandalous year especially with the spygate scandal also happening that year yeah and then the whole the whole lewis championship at the end of the year yeah. it's, that's glock it's glock oh wait it was a crazy year yeah we should watch some old races too don that's actually something i never thought of i do have the f1 tv just like the network so yeah. i can go back and watch all the old races um but yeah so this weekend singapore vettel in first leclerc in second verstappen in third and i'm gonna no mercedes on the podium hey uh, yeah sad nick but i'm gonna have to pull this one out because Will called it last week. He said, he's like, I think Ferrari's got this. And we were coming off two races that I talked about with you, with Ferrari, you know, being dominant in a straight line and Singapore not really having that straight line, you know, be such a big factor in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And Will called it. Ferrari came out with the one. Not only did they win, but they got a one, two. I mean, any, any, any Charles Leclerc, Leclerc fans out there, I just want to let you know that you cannot now bitch about Lewis Hamilton because... He did more bitching on the radio than I've ever seen Lewis Hamilton do in a race. So <laughs> let's just back the, the. I mean, the let's back the the. They, they did pit the guy who was in second. They pitted Vettel y- first before Leclerc, who was at the time leading the race, which yeah, is weird. Vettel also did an insane outlap past a fuck ton of people. Yeah. In the traffic to get to where he was. And I don't know if they would have done the pits differently. Don't quote me on this one, but I, I think it might have been harder for them to get the one, too. Like, I think one of the only ways that they were able to finish 1-2 was if Vettel was in first. Because if he wasn't, then if they would have pitted Vettel later, he might have come out behind Verstappen or behind that, maybe that, that, that is Lewis. true, yeah. That is true. So they, they were trying to guarantee that 1-2 finish, but the guy, Charles Leclerc, the younger guy who mm-hmm. won the last two races, he was kind of upset because he's on the radio like, what's going on? You know, I was in, I got pole, he was in first place, and he's like, what's, you know, give me everything I you can to help me get past my teammate and he w- he wasn't able to and they gave him what was it they said like a plus one or some yeah, they, some they code name him, they give him all the power they could yeah, like all like they have different engine settings so stuff. all mixtures. the credit to vettel for yeah. being able to hold him off and then you can speak better than me on this because you've been watching formula one longer than me v- how good is vettel at safety car restarts that i have to admit i don't know too much about just because well i know you watched a lot of the 2010, 11, 12, that Vettel Red Bull dominance era, and he was at the front a lot. But, dude, so the safety car restarts, Don, is it's, you know, there's a safety car in front of all the Formula One cars, and then it pulls into the pits, and then the guy who's in the front, it's kind of up to him when he wants to go. So when he decides to go, then everybody can start to go. And this happened three times in the last 15 laps of the race. I think there was like three safety cars. I think something like that. Uh, Maybe the last 20 laps. So one of the times Vettel... He went, let's say, on turn 18. He he decided to go. And then the next time he goes on, like, turn 22. And it so it totally threw the guys off behind him, thinking that, oh, he's going to go now. And then, oh, he went later. Or vice versa. He went later the first time and then earlier the second time. And totally threw everyone off. And he was just able to keep that gap between his teammate and hmm. then yeah. come out with the win. So I wanted Vettel to win. As much as I'm a diehard fucking Mercedes fan, they're pretty much wrapped up this championship. I wanted Vettel. To, obviously, I want to see Mercedes win, but I just Vettel needed. I don't. Well, fuck you. They've been at the top <laughs> too long. It's, I've, I've seen Red Bull. We don't need another 2000 and, or 97 through 2006. I don't want to get into this debate because the F1 update isn't <laughs> as long as we can get into this. But I like witnessing greatness and seeing somebody dominate something. To me, just is like it's greatness. It's like watching the fucking Golden State Warriors back before they lose to the Raptors, or you know what I mean. It, it eventually everything turns around, but I like watching greatness. So it's, that's kind of why I like Mercedes so much. But I forget what I was getting well, let at. Let me tell you, you got like 10 years of Ferrari dominance to go back and watch. Oh, I watched it a lot of it with my dad, Schumacher, okay. sitting on his knee and back in the days. This is what got me into Formula One in the first place. But I forget what I was going to say about, uh, what was I getting at before you brought that up? Mercedes dominance. I'm unaware. I can't remember. You threw me off. We had talked about the safety car restarts with Vettel and then... Either way, doesn't matter. Amazing pace by Ferrari to, to come out with the one two. Um and I I talked about it I think three weeks leading into this. By far my favorite race of the year, the fact that they race at night. We do need another rain one though. That one in seventeen was fucking not only was the start incredible, but just seeing like under the lights in the rain, 
nuts. So I wouldn't yeah. mind another. And there's only ever been the one in 17. How, when, many, how many wet races have we had this season? Not many. Not yeah. many. I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but maybe one. I'm I'm not even a hundred percent sure if it was, if it was. Uh, yeah, definitely one, but not many because it's it's been less than most seasons prior yeah. to that. But we'll probably end up getting some in Brazil and maybe even U.S. Suzuka, I don't know. maybe. Yeah, Suzuka too. I'd like to see a wet um, circuit of the Americas when they get to the U.S. track because I really, really, really don't like that track. <laughs> so I would like to throw the wrench in it and. I don't know. It's a good track. It's just too much meant for everything. Yeah. So there's like no, there's, I don't know. We'll get to it when it we. It feels like someone sat down and designed a racetrack, which it, it, it is what it is, right? Totally. When I say everything, I mean like, oh, we need MotoGP. We need F1. We need GT3. We need like, it, there's no, it's all runoff everywhere because the yeah. MotoGP guys need that shit. Anyway, we'll get to USA when we get to USA. But um, I guess before I th- we've talked about the top three a little bit here and there, I want to get to some of the other teams. Haas F1, bro, what the fuck is going on? I heard shout out to them because I, I mean, I shout them out uh, pretty much like I do Wade Keller at this point. But three legs, <laughs> four wheels, Formula One podcast uh, out in the Isle of Man, amazing show. If you guys anybody's interested, check it out. But they made a comment that Haas may be the worst team on the grid right now. Interesting. And it's when you think about it, because right away you're thinking, oh, well, it's obviously Williams. But Williams is at least, like, it might be a very small incline of 20 degrees. Yeah. But they're going up. That's true. Whereas Haas, I don't it's, know if I can say the same. It's stayed the same or has gone down. Or has gone down. And I've talked about it again previous weeks, but the troubles that they have, like, they're able to qualify really good, but then all of a sudden the race comes around and they've got these tires that just can't hold temperature i don't i don't know what the problem is so they've definitely got to figure that out going forward um i liked Gasly in p8 that's pretty awesome to see him you know battling it up and chasing down his old car yeah. with albin not far up up the road and i don't know i think he still obviously is, is trying to be back at red bull next year or the, the following seasons because yeah that's obviously the goal from him uh, good finish for Lando in P7. Finally gets to finish the race this time. Lando Norris. <laughs> what, what, what was that? <laughs> Lando Norris, man. <laughs> oh, you like him? Oh, yeah. yeah Love he, Norris. He's, yeah, he's a Twitch streamer. This kid, how old is he, 20? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, he's young. So if you look at him, you're like, holy, this guy races in F1. I think he's the youngest looking. Like, L- he definitely looking, yeah. looks younger than Lance did or Max did yeah. in the last five I mean, years. Uh, George Russell, he's got a tie with George Russell for looking young. Yeah, that's true. He's just like, he's still got the acne and shit too. Yeah. So it's just like, you can really tell <laughs> yeah. like this guy's a kid, but I don't know. It was good, good on him for P7. And after, like I said, it kind of a rough, what was it? Spa was the last one, right? And they were in Spa and he, he didn't, uh, no, no, the, no, Monza. Monza, sorry, but the no finish in Spa. And then yeah. I, I can't remember where he finished in Monza, but he had a kind of a rough patch. Um, first DNF of the season for Williams. Odd. Huh. For being the worst team on the grid, yeah. And for someone Don, you don't watch very much of it. These guys come in. There's 20 cars. They come in 19th and 20th, pretty much every race. Yeah. Like it's almost a guarantee, unless there's some kind of shenanigans in the race. But they, and but they've yet to retire, so they've always finished. They've always had both cars cross the finish line at the end of the race. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was significant for yeah. a team that's been struggling that much to have their first DNF be in like race. What are we? 16, 17 at Something this point. Like that. So I think maybe fifteen. I don't know, somewhere in that but I range. Guess, I guess that attests to the, their engineer or their engineering and how long they've been in the sport. They know how to develop a car that can actually withstand the length of a race and finish and get there. Yeah, because they're again, Donovan. They're a team like Will said has been in the sport for 40, 42, 43 oh, yeah, years or something fun. like that. So they've been around a while. Um, how about Giovinazzi leading the race? Forza Azzurri. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Italian Told you, coming to Ferrari. Th- Oh, I slow down on that one, but <laughs> get out, Vettel. Giovinazzi's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen often, so one of the guys, kind of in the middle of the pack, had managed to not pit, so he was leading. Yeah, and he led, I think, two or three laps. And he's Italian, so that's kind of why I, I, think I cheer for I, him. I saw a statistic somewhere that out of all the cars so far in the past five years, there's only been like six different drivers to lead a race. And I mean, like, lead a race and, and complete a and lap. And complete a lap, yeah. Because and, we've had stroll lead races and other people in the last few. But yeah. I know what you mean, complete a so full lap. You had lap. Lewis, Valtteri, uh, Verstappen. And you Ricardo. Had, uh, Ric- Ricardo? Well, he won races. Oh, yeah, I guess. And so, Max. They yeah, both won races. Actually, and Kimi and Vettel. 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 Yeah. So but, I guess probably seven. Yeah. But then you have Giovinazzi there with because it shows. I saw a graphic that everyone put out and it was like showed all the laps they've led and then Giovinazzi, Giovinazzi three. with two, <laughs> two, or two, three. yeah. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Bro, Lewis has more wins, I'm pretty sure, in the last five years than the rest of everybody else combined, which is fucked. He's quickly ru- – he's going up the – top 10 charts well that's what happens when the best driver's in the best car like people yeah. complain about it but it's like he's i he wouldn't be winning as many races as he does in another car but he'd be winning more races than some of the other guys are winning hmm. so I, 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 there's one video i actually have to show you when we uh we go to the end here of the uh, podcast here yeah yeah no you, worries you, you get a bit of a kick out of it is it the chickens no because <laughs> that was fucking amazing when you told me about the, the <laughs> fernando alondo chicken video and then we watched it that was well worth the watch but yeah, I guess that was everything else. I wish I remembered what I was talking about earlier. Something to do with the podium, but I don't know. Verstappen getting up there was cool to see the, the Honda and, mm-hmm. and him kind of separating the Ferrari and the Mercedes. Um, if, if Verstappen went to Mercedes mm-hmm. to replace, let's say, Valtteri, yep. who do you think would come out on top, Lewis or Verstappen? I think Lewis. I think right now, Lewis. And given three more years, maybe Max. I think right if that happened like this year, I think it would be Lewis. And, and and if it wasn't Lewis, I think Max would make, no offense, but immature mistakes. Mm-hmm. Maybe bump into Lewis when he knows he, you know, like that move that Leclerc, Leclerc, Leclerc made in, in Monza was as, as on the borderline as you can get. And I don't know if Max has that in him to hold that. You know, yeah, I feel like yeah. Max would be a little more rough with Lewis. Yeah. That's, that's kind of why I'm saying that. Um, but it's a good question. And it was definitely something that was in the rumor mill, but I was happy. I like Botas, and and like I've talked about many times, my mom's a big fan of Botas, so I always cheer for him. And you know, I he's done well. I still I want him to win a race this season because yeah. he hasn't won a race now. I thought he thought he won some of the races in earlier this season. He did well. no. He hasn't won a race this year. He didn't win one in 2018, right. um, and he won in Russia was his first win in 2017 for yeah. for the Mercedes. So I'd like to see him do well in Russia. Speaking of Russia, this coming up this week. I didn't do much of a, a preview for for Singapore, but still, we'll get to a little bit for Russia coming up this weekend. So, Sochi Autodrome. Auto, autodrome? How do you say it? I don't know. Something like Autodrome, yeah. A- autodrome. But uh, it's uh, they drive around Olympic Park. I don't know if you knew this one, Donovan. It's pretty cool. So, where they did the Olympics in 2014, they have like the five buildings. Yeah. The now abandoned Olympic Park. Yeah, which is this. It's kind of good that this race goes there because they don't go there for anything else. So it, it's a very nice venue, though, and the track, like I said, goes in between the buildings, and it's it's pretty cool. Cool little story, not really a story, but just a moment. 2014, I actually watched this race with my dad two years before ever getting back into Formula One. I just happened to be at my dad's on a Sunday, and he was watching it, and I remember asking, he's like, yeah, this is a new track, and they go around the Olympic, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And it was, at the time, I think the Olympics had just finished that year before, whatever, so... It was it was cool to to see that and obviously I remember it. Um, the oh yeah, this was pretty crazy. 195 million U.S. dollars from the Russian government to to make this track. So that was a lot, obviously, of money. Significant doesn't probably I don't know if you know this name, Don, but Will, I'm sure you know Helmut Turk Tilker. Yep, the uh, track designer. So Helmut Turker track designed by this guy. He's done a lot. Maybe not the best. Maybe not the worst. I don't know. Probably not it's, one. All of, of his tracks kind of feel the same because he. Unfor- he yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Your will is right on that one. But and even this track itself, I personally it's not one of my favorites from him, but I don't know. We'll see. 55,000 people, pretty small. I like when you look at a place like Montreal that holds 150 to 200,000, like I don't know if 200, that might be a, a bit of a stretch. But either way, 55,000 seems quite small for yeah. a, a track that is 2.3 kilometers but, ar- I mean, around. But in fairness, it, it, Russia you're not going to have too many people from outside of Russia going into Russia to watch an F1 race, I feel. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. I had a conversation with some buddies about that this week in the lunchroom. And I don't really, not really somewhere I'm too eager to travel to on yeah. a regular basis, but I've never been, so I don't know either. I don't know. I, what, I wouldn't I don't say know. I'm eager to, go to, eager to go to Brazil either. No. Oh, that's... I. But I mean, I, I'd go to the race in Japan. To be completely <clears> honest <throat> with you, I think I might go to Russia before Brazil. I'm not yeah, sure. I'd go to Russia before Because I Mercedes, the team got robbed in Brazil two years ago. So I, if they're getting robbed, then I don't know what... Well, I, the political I, climate in Brazil is right now. Even worse than what it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some good things that are in Brazil as well. So <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about those. But yeah, so 2.3 kilometers, 18 turns. Uh, the lap record is a 135.8 from Valtteri Bottas in 2018. That's actually a pretty short lap for the F1 cars, if you think about it. A minute 35? Yeah, well, when you have some tracks like Austria, a minute 9. Yeah. So it's it's somewhere in the middle when you've got a Singapore close to two minutes and then this is a minute 30 and then I think the short laps are like Montreal, Austria, 
and there's another one that I can't remember. Monaco's pretty short to a minute nine, a yeah. minute ten. Um, but yeah, so you're right. I guess kind of kind of small. It's the sixth time they've been here uh, to this track, and it's the longest turn one. I don't know if it's actually the longest, but it's either this or Mexico in the sense that it's the longest point from when they start and the lights go out to when they're breaking into turn one. Because there's a turn here, but it's flat out. You're just kind of making a little bit of a bend on your right-hand side. So I don't know. It's just a long way to get to that first turn. What's, so. what's your favorite turn one in the current F1 calendar? Oh, my goodness. I, I don't want to get too much dead air on the show, and I don't want to be biased, but honestly, it might be Canada. Fair it, enough. It might be Canada. Canada's interesting. It's got the left and then the long right. I'd have, I have to say Melbourne. Melbourne's always been very interesting. It's got a very wide entry into turn one. Super and tricky in sim racing, bro. <laughs> that fucking track. Me and my buddy do a thing every week. I like to call it Formula Phil. Shout out to Phil. Uh, where we take a random number. We take the 10 teams and then the 21, t- 21 tracks and the 10 teams and we go to Google and we hit random number generator. And then whatever number it says, that's what car we use. And then what number it says for the tracks, that's what track we use. And then every week when we get to work on Monday, we give in our times and he writes them in a book and then we do the random number generator and we, I don't know, I like to call it formula fill, but, (laughs) uh, yeah. So torpedo is the only other thing I wanted to bring up (laughs) the, the infamous, infamous moment with Daniel Kvyat when he ran into the back of, uh, Sebastian Vettel on lap one of the 25th, 16 Russian grand prix and, and hit him twice he the bumped. birth of the torpedo yeah and then Vettel's like what is he doing he's coming to me like a torpedo and he comes in the <laughs> back of him and yeah I don't know that's when that and all the started the torpedo struck in Singapore this year pardon it struck in Singapore the torpedo oh yeah he hit Kimmy going into turn one yeah I wonder if Kimmy went and asked Vettel or you know, <laughs> I see why you called him the torpedo but I don't know uh, yeah that's that's pretty much that like I said I'm not a big fan of this track as far as like sim racing goes but it's a. It should be a good race, and I'm. I'm, well, I'm hoping that it's a little bit better than some of the races that we've had in the past. Yeah. I because mean, we've been on a pretty good spell for races compared to the start of the season. Oh yeah, when I say that, I mean races of Russia's past, not okay. not yeah, yeah. of our the last seven races. It, it has in, been a little dull. Yes, the Russia races haven't been the best, but yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, boys, another good one. Episode 55 of the Roundtable. Don't know if I said it at the beginning of the show, but thanks for joining it. Thanks for checking it out, guys. And, well, thank you guys for obviously being here, but thank that's you. the usual. Hollywood might be back. Uh, Mania season, we'll <laughs> see. Uh, Glasses pretty, are going away. Pretty booked up. Yeah. I wanted to bring Hollywood Dawn back, so. When are we getting Miami Dawn? Ooh, that's a different character altogether. <laughs> yet, to, yet to be seen. <laughs> Get a little bit of the white powder under the nose. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thank you for checking out the show. If you haven't already, check us out on Instagram and Twitter at PWLookBack. Give us a like, comment, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Send us an email, prowrestlinglookback at gmail.com. Head over to iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube. Hit the five stars, subscribe, like, share. If you want, give me a follow as well on Twitter, S C E L S A. Why did I spell that like that? That was weird. Did you forget your own name? I think for a second I did. Just on 44. Lateral G, L A T E R E L G. And if you want to check out any of the merchandise, check out the new t shirt. It's not a work. Teespring.com slash pro wrestling look back. And don't forget, guys, check out our sponsor, Pure Oxide Premium CBD Oils. Available at Pure Oxide CBD on Instagram. They've got affiliate accounts as well for other uh, areas, locations. PureOxide.com ships worldwide. No GMOs. THC free. Lab tested. Check them out. At Justin.Brothers on Instagram for more information. Contact him. Let him know which uh, which one is the best for you. And basically just check out the website. That's where you can really find out most of the information on Pure Oxide. It's pureoxide.com. This is The Roundtable, episode 55. I'm Nick. I'm Hollywood Don. I'm Will. Stay classy. Stay classy.